Well, welcome, we're live at the D-Bark Center between OCA action between the Mohawk College Mountaineers and the Niagara Knights. Deep three to start off this contest is missed. Rebound up and that is missed as well. A jump ball on the floor and it's gonna be possession for Mohawk to start this contest. Greg Campbell here bringing you through the Saturday evening action here on Mohawk College TV. We had the open house here this afternoon. We had a pair of volleyball games going on and now it's double header action between the Knights and the Mountaineers here on Mohawk College TV. Mountaineers come into the contest after a loss on Tuesday evening to Fanshawe. The Knights looking to make it an 0-2 week for the Mountaineers on home court. A healthy crowd for a Saturday evening here at the D-Bark, and Mohawk is gonna try and get a split here on home court this week. So, got a call on the floor here right now. So we are, saw this a lot in the opening contest of the season. A bit of a difference between the shot clock and the game clock in terms of the timing of when to hit said button. For head coach Michael Bacaria, the Knights come into this game looking to walk away with a Saturday evening victory and spoil the open house for the Mohawk College faithful. Beth Minnelli waiting instructions from one of the officials. She had a solid performance in their outing on Tuesday evening in which they lost. Mohawk gets the ball inbounded to the right corner, ends up in the hands of Pokernick. Pokernick is gonna use the screen, kicks it out into the lane for Hughes. Hughes over to Pokernick, deep right three, misses. Secures her own rebound up, and that is missed as well, rebound. Knights, Knights in transition on their way, moving left to right. Deep three on the right pocket, wing missed on the play by Hannah Baker, rebound Mohawk. Ball is fumbled around on the floor right now. Knights come up with the ball into the hands of Baker. Baker's gonna set up shop on the left wing. No one's contesting her, dumps it into the paint instead. High off glass, that shot missed by Tia Styes. Pokernick now, set up on the right wing. Set up the offense, takes the screen from Hughes. Hughes kicks out over to Minnelli. Minnelli to Hughes. Hughes looking to swing that ball around the world. It's gonna hand it off to Otong. Six on the shot clock. Back to the hands of Hughes. Deep three, the ball gets stuck. What an opportunity missed by the Mohawk Mountaineers. Second time I've seen this in the last two broadcasts. I've never seen this in back-to-back -back games before, folks. Both times the ball gets stuck on the side of the rim. I don't know what they're doing to the Nets here at Mohawk, but some unfortunate bounces to say the least. If we could get a close up on that right now, we got some of the players trying to actually push the ball out on the court. There you go. Much to the applause of the faithful. So early on here, 828 left in the first quarter action, Saturday night evening action between the Niagara College Knights and the Mohawk Mountaineers, and we are not at at a full nil to nil, sounds like a soccer broadcast more than a basketball broadcast. Knights are gonna drive into lane, shot is missed, rebound Manley. Manley's gonna push the pace, looking at Pokernick on the left side, bounce pass, Pokernick goes back door, kicks it back out, Otong swings it around, Hughes gets her man in the air. Hughes is gonna fake the pass, goes up, no foul, Pokernick fall through, there's the first basket of the evening, Sam Pokernick. The 5'8 guard of Oakville, Loyola. The team's driving force in Tuesday evening's loss. Niagara's gonna set up on the right wing. Yates has the ball, deep three, in and out. Hughes with the rebound. Stretch outlet to Minnelli. Minnelli, two on two the other way over to Pokernick. Pokernick thought about it, back over to Minnelli. Let's take the screen. Hand off to Otong. Otong out to Hughes. Hughes backdoor pass, Pokernick. Shot blocked on the play. Coming in to block, Tia Styes, the six foot one forward out of St. Catharines. Steese with the big block on Pokernick, who is one of the key players to watch in this matchup. The team's lean score 
in their outing on Tuesday. Otong's pass for backdoor to Pokernik is a turnover. And the contest last on Tuesday, substitution on the floor for Mohawk. Abby Bette checking into the contest. In their loss, and Emily Chapinier checking out. In their loss on Tuesday evening, they tried a lot of those backdoor cuts, and Fanshawe's ferocious defense and senior leadership was reading that all night. So far, so good for Mohawk tonight. It's going to be a foul on the floor before the shot. It's going to be a push on the play. So Knights will get the ball underneath Nash. So we have another issue with the shot clock. And that's going to be reset to 14. 7-13 here left in the first quarter. 2 nothing Mohawk over the Niagara Knights. Knights trying to respond. Not this game up. That won't help. Turnover on the floor. Hughes has the ball. Stretch out across the court to Bennett. Ball's tipped out of bounds on the play by number 11, Sierra Stefan. That will prevent the stretch outlet pass from happening. Mohawk's going to have the ball with 17 on the shot clock. Pokernik supporting the right knee brace with the left gauze pad on the left knee. Out to Hughes. Hughes tries to bowl her way through to Bennett. Bennett gets it to Hughes, who pushed off her man. No call. Ball on the floor. Jump ball. It's going to be Mohawk's possession. So early on, not a lot of scoring in this contest to this point. Two nothing is the score. Millie's gonna find Hughes underneath the net. He's gonna go reverse layup with the left hand. Shot miss. Niagara's got the ball. Pushing the pace is Hannah Baker. Baker outlet to her teammate. Shot missed on the play by Steese out of bounds and the Knights will retain possession. Check it into the contest. First time this evening, Emily Andreas. Five foot three guard out of Guelph St. James. So basic inbound formation by the Knights defended well by Mountaineers. Big block of the play by Hughes. Pokernik ends up with it. So they push the pace with that left hand, switches over to the right. They kick it over to Andres, who's far wide open in the left corner. It's gonna be a push off on the rebound on the play. Hughes the one called for that. Leanna Hughes, a five foot eight guard of Oakville Holy Trinity in her fourth year of eligibility is gonna run a lot of that pick and roll action with Sam Pokernick, the product of Loyola Oakville. Knights trying to get their first basket of the contest, nearly four minutes into action here on your Saturday evening. Spin move, that's a beautiful move. A converted bucket, bucket by Tia Stees. Knotted up here early on at the deep arc. You're watching Mohawk College TV bringing you OCA women's basketball action on your Saturday evening. It's open house weekend here at Mohawk College and what better way to cap it off than a doubleheader of basketballs. Pokernick into the lane, bumped, shot no good. Miscommunication, Knights still have the ball. Ball's gonna be swung out, deep three. It's gonna hit the front of the rim, right into the weighty hands of Steez shot miss. Back to Steez again, Steez gonna get tipped in one. Tia Steez, the St. Catherine product with the and one opportunity and one at the line. Poor box out by the Mountaineers on that play. Leaves Steez wide open for the easy and one opportunity. Steez is gonna head to the line trying to push this lead further up to three. That shot is missed. No box out by the Mountaineers. There's gonna be a foul on the floor. Steez chasing after the ball, pushes into Pokernick. Mohawk will get the ball on their end line. Minutely, looking for Andres. Ball's gonna be too far for her into the waiting hands of Sophia Aikalide. Into the corner, 
Goes Baker, Baker shot up off the rim. Minutely high points the rebound. Slowing down the pace. Pass intercepted on the play. Two on one, nice the other way. Nice little bounce pass. Conversion by Baker, up and good. Poor outlet pass by the Mountaineers. Converts on the other end are the Knights. 4-4 four, four is the score. Make that 6-4, Sam Pokernick off the left side. Hughes is gonna be checking back into the game on the next opportunity for the Mountaineers. Baker straight into lane, blew by Pokernick. Ball tipped around into the hands of Bennett. Bennett looking for Minnelly. Two on one, three on two. She's gonna call her own number. Last second over to Minnelly into the hands of Baker. Pace picking up just a little here at the D bar on your Saturday evening. Baker left wing three in and out. Minley rebound. Matched up with Baker right now on the right side of the court. Officials right on top of her in that situation. Minley backdoor cut. Pokernick with the convert. Sam Pokernick with the backdoor cut. And that is going to cue a substitution and a timeout on the floor for McMass. For Mohawk, Kevin Duffy calls his first of the contest. And Steez with the easy 2-on-1 opportunity early on. She is one of the players that Mohawk needs to make sure they can box out. And if you're head coach Michael Beccaria, the 19-year coach in or in Niagara, his team's come out on the road here and they responded early and often. It's those second chance opportunities that have worked for them so far in this case. And you look at Kevin Duffy and his squad coming off the loss Tuesday evening, a tough pill to swallow considering they were just outclassed by a team that had more veteran leadership. But early on that backdoor cut with Hughes to Pokernick has worked so far and not many turnovers to this point. Open house weekend here at the D-Bark. Pair of volleyball contests going on earlier in the day. And now we're gonna cap off the evening with the back-to-back -back for Mountaineers basketball. 2-3 zone implored by the Mountaineers. Ball's gonna be brought to the right corner into the hands of Steez. Steez tried to put the shot up, no avail. Chapigny is gonna drop it off to Emily. Emily is going to kick it over to Pokernick. Pokernick driving into lane is going to hand it off to Hughes. Hughes kicks it out. Deep three. Minley off the front rim. Out of bounds. So a good looking shot opportunity swinging the ball were the Mountaineers. No convert, unfortunately, on the other end. We're all nodded at six here at the D bar. Who is gonna take the next step forward in this game? Ball's gonna be swung around the world. Deep three, left wing side, completely misses the net and out of bounds. Elena Yates with the air ball, the five foot five guard out of Hamilton, Ontario in her first year of eligibility. Substitution is gonna be coming shortly for the Knights on the next opportunity. Pocketnick again with the backdoor cut, almost had an opportunity. Ball swung back out to Hughes. Hughes, power dribble on the left hand, looked for Otong. Does find her underneath. Nice backdoor cut by Otong, and a good find by Hughes, and Mohawk extends their lead to two. Knights try to respond to the other end. Baker goes up between three defenders off the right side of the glass board, and that is gonna be tipped out of bounds. A substitution coming right now for the Knights. Steez is going to check out to the game, out of the game, and checking in Estiaka Gilbert, the five foot nine Owen Sound forward in her second year of eligibility. Pocket left three, got it. First three of the evening for Hannah Baker. Back and forth affair. Here we go at the D bar. 
Nice up and in on that play. Much to the applause and the faithful here at the D-Bark on your Saturday evening. A 2-3 zone being used by the Mountaineers. Ball on the right wing, swung back around into the high post. Out to Baker. Can she make it two for two? Can't find the baked goods on that one. She's going to be fouled on the play. Otong hacking Sophia Alkaid, and then she'll go to the line for two. Sophia Alkaid, first year product out of St. Catharines, five foot five guard, will head to the line for two shots. Coaches imploring that the netting be fixed. Well, that's one way to do it. Sophia Alkaid fixes it herself on that play. Noisemakers don't work on that one. Goes two for two for the line, and we're again, we're knotted at 10. Otar on the left wing. I bet it. Bennett looking for Pakovic on that backdoor cut. Doesn't work. We're on tongue. Six on the shot clock. Pakovic's got to make a decision. Spins off the right hand. Tried to find someone in the lane. Shot clock is going to go off. Hoist a prayer. And that is going to be before the actual shot clock went off. Officials called it turnover. Pockernick coming into the contest, averaging 23 points per game, shooting 41% from the field. Ball's going to be kicked to the right wing. Deep three. That miss is way off. Pockernick tried to go for the rebound into the hands of Baker. Looks like a travel on the play, not going to get called. Ball swung over to the left wing. Three. High point in the rebound are the Knights. Third opportunity. Another three. That's going to be missed. Fighting for the rebound finally ends up in the hands of Pokernik after Emily with the rebound. Middley with the rebound. Pokernik kicks it out. Otong, left side shot, missed. Bennett with the hustle. Emily going up. Middley, no, not before the shot. So foul on the floor for Middley before the shot goes off. And Beth Middley, despite imploring for her case, is not going to get it on that one. Andrea's going to check back into ga the game, the Guelph St. James product. Coming in, not having scored to this point, looking for her first basket of the year. Bennett gets it off the inbound pass. Over on Tong, right, win right wing shot, missed. Alkayan is going to drop it off to Baker. Baker hits the front side of the rim, secures her own rebound. Eight seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Hoists up a shot, hits the side of the net. Minnelly with the rebound. Trying to stretch Ella to Andreas. Turnover into the hands of Haley Reynolds. Last possession of the quarter. Baker, left wing three. Missed everything. Minnelly with the shot. Or Andreas didn't realize the time. Shot gets off. Is it gonna count? Is it gonna count is the question. I don't think it did. And they're gonna count it. So there's the first way to score your basket of the year. Emily Andres with the buzzer beater to end the first quarter and the Mountaineers take a two point lead heading into the second quarter. I didn't think she had an opportunity to get that shot off in that moment. If Baker had held onto that ball a couple more seconds, normally if there's the shot clock is turned off, then you don't wanna be shooting the ball. But Baker decided to go for the shot, and guess what? Emily Andreas got her first basket of the year. For Kevin Duffy and his squad, it's a better start to this game. On the other end, Michael Beccaria and his squad. A tight-knit affair so far. If you look at Otong on that left wing there, hustling for the rebound, was bad straight to Minnelli. Minnelli should have had the M1 opportunity. Didn't happen though, foul was on the floor before the shot got off. 
Beth Minnelli has been all over the boards here early on on your Saturday evening. The five foot seven guard out of London, London, Regina Monday in her first year of eligibility has been crashing the glass early and often. Some first quarter stats for you right now, leading the points for the Knights. Tia Stees has four points in the contest. Stineka Gilbert with two, as well as Hannah Baker. And on the other side, it's been Sam Pokernick show so far. Six points and four rebounds. She keeps this pace up, folks. She's gonna be off to classic Tim's double-double here this evening. Looking at the rebounding situation, Mohawk out rebounding the Knights 19 to 15 and having a game high five rebounds to this point is Beth Minnelly. Pokernick accounting for seven of the team's 17 shots in the first quarter. Knights shooting just 15% in that first quarter. Meanwhile, the Mountaineers shooting 35%. And the turnover game, something that Kevin Duffy stressed before this game and the game before is that they need not to turn the ball over so frequently to give themselves opportunities. Well, so far that's not a good sign, but they have held it on the defensive end. They have seven turnovers in this contest compared to just one for the Knights. Section, second quarter action underway here at the D-Bar. 2-3 zone still being used by the Mountaineers. Ball swung left to right, into the post. High off glass, and that's up and in. Steve starts off where she started the first quarter with the basket. That high-low game of the Knights giving the Mountaineers a bit of trouble here early on. Pockernick's gonna force it up between two defenders. She's gonna get a call, and she's gonna head to the line for the first time this evening. Sam Pockernick, as we mentioned at the top of the broadcast, coming in averaging a team high 23 points on the season, shooting 41% from the field. That first shot is up, and that's good. Calls her own miss on that play into the hands of Steez. Steez over to Alkayad. Alkayad over to Baker. Baker match up with Andreas. Little jab steps, gonna sweep over to that left hand, kicks it back to the pocket right corner. Right into the waiting heads of Bennett. Bennett to Pocknick. Pocknick says stop, start on drive, creates contact, and that's gonna be a charge on the floor. Sam Pocknick digging her elbow in on the defender on that play, gets called with the charge, and we're gonna have a timeout coming on the floor. Timeout, timeout called by Michael Beccaria, with his team trailing by a single point here early on in the second quarter. The Mohawk right now. They're successfully imploring that backdoor cut action at the moment. Niagara still has not been able to pick it up or adjust properly on the defensive end. But if you're coach Kevin Duffy, you gotta find a secondary score in terms of someone getting on the points department and a tertiary score. So Pokernick is not the primary focus of the Knights defense. And speaking of those aforementioned Knights, on the other side right now, it's just about converting on the missed opportunities on their end. They've probably had already a dozen shots underneath the net that have been closer relatively to re easy made baskets. They have not converted yet to this point. So both teams are gonna come out of the timeout a little more energized. Less than a minute into the second quarter here at the D-Bark on your Saturday evening. Double header action, Knights Mountaineers here on Mohawk College TV. Alkayad's gonna bring the ball across half court. Two, three zone. Otongan, Pokernik at the top of it. Alkayad looking back door. Over to Steez. Steez floater off the right foot. Shot no good, tipped out of bounds on Bennett on the play, they're gonna call it actually off Steez. Mohawk's gonna get a break on that one. So they're gonna set up with a four high in their offensive look right now with Pocknick running through that back door. Look for her to go for the screen. Gonna end up with her on the left wing. 
They get doubled over to Otong. Otong straight away three. Missed. Steve's fighting for the rebound. Into the hands of a Mountaineer. And converting is Beth Minnelli who gets on the scoreboard. Great hustle play. Beth Minnelli who had a team high five rebounds in that first quarter. Secures the offensive rebound. The second chance opportunity and makes it count. Not sure who she was trying to pass the ball to. Kristen Atkins on the play. A little miscommunication on that offensive set. Mohawk with their biggest lead in the contest to this point. Three points. Trying to push it to five or six, depending on what happens on this possession. Bennett in the pocket corner. Ball swung across the pond. Over to the hands of Hughes in the pocket left corner. Back to Pockernick. Go Tong. Pockernick driving off the left hand. Kicks it out. Beth Minnelli, three. Shot missed. Securing the rebound. Otong off the right hand, and that's in. D.D. Otong with the right-handed floater, the 5'7 guard out of Cambridge View. Cambridge Glenview Park extends the lead to five. Baker, matchup with Pockernick. Ball almost heads into the back core. Eight on the shot clock. Shot, left side, in and out for al -Qaed. Minnelli. Power dribble on that right hand, bounce pass into the lane. Didi Otong up, shot looked like she got fouled, didn't get it. Bennett with the rebound, out to Menelie. Shot blocked. Pockernick with the ball, six on the shot clock. It's gonna end up with it. Who's gonna take this shot? Otong, last second, hits the front rim, right into the hands of her teammate, Bennett, and one! Abby Bennett with the end one. And she'll go to the line for one. Abby Bennett, the 5'8 guard out Brampton, first year of eligibility, waiting for hands with a Christmas gift, and she converts on the other end. Bennett coming into the contest, averaging four points a game and six and a half rebounds, averaging also half a steal and a block a game. Otaga again. Shot by Bennett, in and out. Tipped off a Minnelli. It's gonna actually end up in the hands of Mohawk, so I thought it was off a Mohawk defender, not on that play. They get the ball to Pockernick as if first look they're looking for. On Tong, slashing to the net. Ends up in the right corner. One on the shot clock, doesn't realize it. Into the hands of al -Qaed. Alkaya okay, going to the other way. Kicks it over to Baker. Baker gets Hughes moving. Off the glass, up and in. Beautiful look, Hannah Baker. Four points in the first quarter, adds a pair here in the second. Mohawks lead trimmed to five. Minnelli. Pockernick's gonna dictate the offense. Gonna call for that screen from Hughes. Gonna defer it over to Otong. It's gonna be a travel on Otong. Didn't realize her feet were shuffling as she made that pass. And it's gonna be another timeout on the floor for Kevin Duffy, the 11 year veteran. So coming into this contest, the top three scores for the Knights, for the Mountaineers in the contest, Sam Pocknick averaging 23 points a game, Leanna Hughes, with five and a half and points, and Beth Minnelli with five and a half. And we look at Pocknick tiptoeing that sideline, kicked it over to Hughes, back to Pocknick. Ends up in the hands of Otong. Right into the gift basket of Bennett who converts for the end one. Coach Kevin Duffy's tucking it over to his squad right now who have a five point lead with 6-12 left here in the first quarter looking to extend their lead. Looking at the other sideline, the leading scores for the Knights. Bridget Atkinson coming into the game averaging 14 points a game. Hannah Baker second on the team with 11 and Tia Stees 
with nine. al is going to have the ball on the left side. Kick it over to her teammate. Back into her hands. Little hot potato looking for the high post coaches employ. Ball ends up in the hands of Baker. Baker's going to force her way in. Off the right hand, in and out. Unfortunate roll. Pocket is going to push the pace on the left side. He's going to pull up. He's going to find Minnelly. No one on Minnelly. He's going to snipe it over to Otong. Back in the hands of Pocket. Pokernick to Bennett. Bennett with the jab step back to Pokernick. Pokernick, left wing three off the far side. Rebounded on the play by Sierra Stefan. The five foot seven guard out of Woodstock in her first year. Okay, into lane, pretty move off the left hand, in and out. Substitution coming on the next opportunity. Stees is gonna check back into the game. A nice basket by the Mountaineers, their largest lead of the game. 21-14, they lead with 5.05 left here in the first half at the Debark on your Saturday evening, produced by Mohawk TV. Open house weekend right now. Mountaineers not opening the Knights into their home at the moment. Pocketix kicking the pace, looked for Otong underneath the net, didn't happen. They look for that high screen from Hughes, gonna defer it again. It's gonna get bumped on the play while she's driving into the lane by Baker. Q Stees coming back into the contest. A pair of substitutions for Kevin Duffy and his squad. Emily Andreas is gonna check back into the game as is Emily Champigny, the second year 5'10 center of Sir Winston Churchill here in Hamilton. Emily didn't, Chap Emily, Minnelly, my apologies, game. my name's mixed up here. Minnelly did not establish her feet on the inbounds pass. It's gonna be a turnover. All these French names got me a little confused. What's not confusing is the play of the Mountaineers here on your Saturday evening. Kevin Duffy and his team responding nicely after a humbling defeat to St. Louis to the Fanshawe Falcons on Tuesday. Baker off the right hand. Missed. Minnelly or Andreas. Andreas, little crossover, kicks it back out. Chapinier calling for it. Right into the hands of Pokernik. Secures their offensive rebound up a second time. Shot missed. Rebound, Knights. Yates pushing the pace to Baker. Baker creates contact. Gets it to go. Hannah Baker, the 5'8 guard out of Thorold in her second year, creating the contact and converting. Minnelly over to Hughes. Back to Minnelly. Chapinier straight away matched up with Steez. Got bumped, didn't get a call. Pocknick hustling, out of bounds. Knights ball. Chapinier speaking to one of the officials, making sure they are aware of the pushing and the bumping going on there in the post, where a lot of things you would say go unnoticed, to say the least. That high zone spotted by Andres and Pokernik right now. Chapinier hoisting the middle of that defense, anchoring it, so to speak. They end up on the left wing. Three right into the hands of Minnelli. Coach Michael Beccaria not happy with the shot selection on that last play. Minnelli drives out the right hand to Andres. And take the screen from Chapinier. Over to Pokernik, double screen, step back shot. That's missed. Alkai is gonna slow it down here just a little. Under the three minute mark here at the D-bar. Reynolds kicks it out to Stees. Stees high off glass, shot missed. Pokernik, five on one, decides to slow it down. That's a good call by the veteran. Pocketnik, back to her. Andreas faked it, thought about it too much. A pair of substitutions gonna be on the floor for both teams next opportunity. Yates has it. Over to Reynolds. To Alkayed. To Stees. Stees, uncontested. I don't know what happened on the miscommunication there. 
nonetheless, Tia Stees with the easy basket. Third year product out of St. Catharines, Ontario. Lead shrunk from seven to three. Andreas has the ball over to Minnelli. Minnelli to Hughes. Hughes bullies her way. He's gonna get double teams. He's gotta find a way. He's gotta find someone. It's gonna be a travel on the play. Wasn't aware of that pivot foot being rotated. And an easy convert on the play early on by Minnelli. Waved off. And Baker with a tough uncontested contested shot between two defenders. Al Qaed to Reynolds, turnover. Otong tried to find her teammate in Pokernik, ends up in the hands of Reynolds. Baker has it. Pull up jumper, six feet out, shot miss, ball tipped around. The hands of Otong. Bennett. Ball is fumbled around on the play into the hands of the Sam Pokernik has the ball right now for the Mountaineers, who lead 21-18 with a minute left here in the first half here at the D-Bar. Bennett has the ball looking for Pokernik, back door off the head of Baker into the hands of Pokernik, off the right hand, shot is missed. Rebound to Shepard, over to al -Qaed. al -Qaed into the lane, dumps it off. Steese tipping the ball around. Back to Minnelli. Pokernik, one-on-one with Reynolds, pulls up. So skipped across the pond. Otong with the shot, missed. And a rebound on the play by Sophia al -Qaed. And it's gonna be Knight's possession with 31 and a half seconds. A 2-3 zone of the Mountaineers working. It's magic here so far in the first half. Steeds has the ball. Shot up, high off glass, that is missed. Champigny with the rebound, one last possession. Picks up her pivot foot. Over the hands of Minnelli. Minnelli's gonna have it. Six on the shot clock, matched up with Reynolds. Picks up her dribble, who's she gonna find? Ball fumbled around into the hands of Champigny. High off glass and a buzzer beater. Two in a row make that for the Mohawk Mountaineers. Consecutive buzzer beaters. And they end the half with that five point lead. They lead the Niagara Knights 23 to 18 at the half. Kevin Duffy and his squad doing a good job responding after that defeat Tuesday evening.
over George, loses to George Brown, 70 to 99. Lasai and Loyalist went at it. Loyalist comes out, 106, 84. St. Lawrence over Algonquin, 80 to 67. Humber over Lambton, 102 to 96. And St. Clair over Conestoga, 94. 94 to 70. Mohawk Niagara, we got a blank on that. Well, guess what? Because that's happening right now here at the D Mark on your Saturday evening, courtesy of Mohawk TV. Greg Campbell bringing you through Saturday evening action at the D Mark. It's open house weekend here, and the Mountaineers coming into this game off a, off a terrible loss in the eyes of Coach D Kevin Duffy, to say the least. But now they have responded nicely in this game leading 23 to 18 heading into the third quarter. OCAA action on your Saturday evening. The Mountaineers leading by five, hanging into the third, up 23 to 18. Pockner is to get over to Minnelli. Minnelli to Hughes. Hughes to Pockernick. Pockernick debating about over to Minnelli. Shot is tipped on the play, didn't see that. Stees with the rebound, double team. Alec to Baker. Baker dressed up on that left shoulder even though it's not Halloween anymore. Get that out of here, says Hughes. Pocknick the other way. Two on two, looking for Otong cross court. Ends up over the head of Chapinier into the hands of al -Qaed. al -Qaed, coast to coast stops. Pulls her defender up, misses the shot. Baker with the rebound, foul on the play. And Baker will go to the line for two. An opportunity for Sophia al on that play was thinking about her defender chasing much harder than she actually was on the play. And instead her teammate and Hannah Baker will head to the line for two shots. Leading scores after the first half. Tia Stees with eight points for the Knights and six for Hannah Baker who's to the line for her second shot. That shot is through and that's good. Pockernick nine points and six rebounds other on the other end. And Beth Minnelli, a game high, eight rebounds to this point. Chipping in with six rebounds as well is Abby Bennett. Pockernick hustled over to Tong. Fights off Baker, pushes off her into the hands of Chapinier. Chapinier's got to look for Tong wide open underneath, blows it. Baker pushing the plays, four on three. Pulls up on the dribble, kicks it over. Stefan back to her teammate into the lane. Back door to Stefan. Creates contact. Up and in. 5-0 run. 4-0 run here early on for the Knights coming out of the half. The lead's cut to one. Pockernick left wing three. Got it! Sam Pockernick from the land beyond. Two-three zone. That's what Kevin Duffy and the squad like, and that's what they're imploring here to begin the third quarter. The 11-year coach trying to get his team on the winning side here at home. That won't help. A beautiful spin move off the right hand by Tia Stees, and we are back to a two-point lead. 
Andreas and Bennett waiting on by the scorer's table. Minnelli into the lane for Chapigny. Chapigny goes off that pivot foot on the left side, trying to spin in and out. Three on the shot clock, deep three, Hughes, got it! Deep three, Leanna Hughes, back-to-back -back threes for the Mountaineers. Knights trying to respond. Ball swung around. Deep three of her own. Alkaya shot missed. Rebound Stees. Stees up again. Stees with two consecutive baskets for the Knights. Stees has been a dominant force on the inside so far. The team's second lean score coming into the game, averaging nine points a game. Easy basket on the other end. A great move by Minnelli. That zone creeping higher and higher. Tipped out of bounds. Baker to al -Qaed. Substitution coming on the floor as well for the Knights checking into the game. Samantha Bapti, the 5'6 forward out of Mississauga in her second year of eligibility. So look how high this zone is playing right now for the Knights. Right by the free throw line, extended almost. Not sure what they're calling exactly on the floor right now. Officials conferring. So a shot clock issue. So it's going to get reset to 19. Kevin Duffy, no, arms crossed. He can't be too happy at games far from over. Bennett on the inbound. Knights defense chance picking up right beside me. Pokernick dribbles off that left hand. Over to Minnelli, to Hughes. Six on the shot clock. Back door to Pokernick, uncontested up and in. Sam Pokernick on the back door. And they left it open and Pokernick converts. Baker, over to Alkaya, left wing three, that's gonna miss. Shot tipped out of bounds. Baker trying to fly in off her own initial pass. She's gonna get subbed out of the contest. Atlanta Yates checks back in, as does Haley Reynolds. Alkaya is gonna check out of the game. Mohawk with her biggest lead of the game to this point, leading by seven. Shooting 30% in the contest to this point compared to just 20 for the Knights. Bennett has the ball. Pocknick calling for it. Ends up in her hands. Right wing three. Deep three. Off the far side. Hughes with the rebound. Pocknick backdoor cut. Again, Sam Pocknick cutting into the lane and uncontested off a cut. The defender's not accounting for her even though she's the team lead scorer at 23 a game and she's well on that pace tonight. Nine points coming in to the second half on four of 13 shooting from the field. Only got to the line two lines though. That'll be another two. There it is, up and in. Sam Pokernick on a 6-0 run. 37-26. Yates floats it up, in and out, into the hands of her teammate. Bafti is gonna get fouled on the floor. No, are they gonna call it out of bounds? So it's gonna be tipped out of bounds on the play, so. So Minnelli driving into lane, kicks it out to Pokernick. Pokernick deep three and another layup of her own. Can hit you from beyond the arc, can hit you inside the lane. Sam Pokernick, a five weapon tool. That is a great spin move on the play by Tia Stees. She has been the dominating force so far for the Knights. The Mountaineers have not had a response for her in the paint to this point. Hughes has it, gets Stees up in the air. He's got that step inside, that's blocked. Stees with the tip on the play. Alkaya ends up with the ball. It's going to be bunched by Hughes. So they're going to have possession just opposite of the scores table. 
cue of substitution from Kevin Duffy. Chapinier will check back into the game, the 5'10 center out of Sir Winston Churchill in her second year. Hughes is going to check out. 2-3 zone. Both teams seem to be using that at this point. That's their bread and butter. Baker has it. Or to Alkayan. To the corner for Yates. Yates gets Bennett up in the air. Ball is stripped on the floor. Mohawk ends up with it. Almost intercepted. It will be intercepted by Baker. Baker reading the quarterback size. Goes off glass. Shot missed Minley with the rebound. Pocknick's going to push the pace. Three on two the other way. Pocknick off the right hand up and in. What a third quarter so far for Sam Pocknick. We were handing out player of the game towels. She is the leader right now for this Mountaineer squad. And a big reason why they're up nine. 39-28 here in the third. Steez again in the paint. Just too big, too strong for Emily Chapinier. She'll head to the line for one. Steez again calming the storm for the Knights. Coming into the game with nine points a game, shooting 36% from the field while averaging 6.3 rebounds a game, as well as one steal. Minnelly to Chapinier. Chapinier tiptoeing that edge of the sideline. Baker harassing her. Gets it off to Pocknick cleanly. Pocknick uses use a screen from Chapinier. Kicks out to Andreas. To Bennett. Over to Pocknick. Pocknick's going to drive by Baker. Reverse layup. Hard foul by Yates on the play. And Sam Pocknick will head to the line for two. <laughs> Sam Pocknick showing she can do it all here in this third quarter. A deep three on the left wing side. A couple unaccounted times she has cut into the lane for layups and now she heads to the line for two. And she's pretty good at free throws too, folks. Mohawk with his biggest lead, 40 to 30. The Oakville, Ontario product doing her high school proud. Stees with the rebound. Over to Yates. Yates dribbles off the right hand. He's going to dump it into Steez. Steez is going to try to be stripped on the play by Manley. Still secures the ball. Possession arrow favors the Knights, and that's where it'll be on the end line. Otong in, Andres out. Steez has it. Over to Reynolds. Reynolds step back three off the far side. Bennett with that outlet. Trying to find Pocknick back towards to skip it over to Tong. Tong back to Pocknick. Supporting the right knee brace. Seems to be just fine. Has that right hand dribble. Picks it up. Dumps it to Chapinier who is screaming for the ball. It's going to get rejected on the play. Steez outlet to Alkayed. Alkayed up against Bennett. Off the glass, she'll head to the line for two. So Emily Chapinier imploring for Sam Pocknick to hand the ball to her in the post in that situation. A little too late, and by the time that happened, Steez had the inside position with the block. First shot is good by Alkaid. Coming into the game averaging just three points per game. Three or four from the line though this year. She does hit again. Bit of a high court, 2-2-1, two, two, full court press right now. Mountaineers break it, but the shot is missed. Baker tried to find Yates and that's gonna be out of bounds. So as you can see, a decent crowd here on your Saturday evening here at the D-Bark, Evelyn Sports and Entertainment, bringing you this live broadcast of OCAA basketball. Lady Mountaineers and Lady Knights taking on each other here in the first of two contests. 
men's contest comes up at eight. Pokernik with the foul. It's gonna be before the shot. Chapinier with the miss. Pokernik crashing the boards. A push on the floor by Stees. Sierra Stefan is gonna check back into the game. The first year 5'7 guard out of Woodstock. As is Kim Shepard, the third year forward out of Woodstock, Ontario, six foot. Good hustle by the Knights on that play. It's gonna end up in their hands. Trying to find a way back into this game, trailing by eight, just under two minutes left here in the third quarter. Okay, and trying to penetrate the 2-3 zones and pick up her dribble. To Stefan, to Baker. Baker's gonna split two defenders, they kick it out. Down into the paint. Off glass, and that's in. Sierra Stefan, the first year forward out. Woodstock gets it done. So a little high, low action. Forces the press higher, and they find that backdoor cut, just as the Mountaineers have done to the Knights all evening. Minnelli has the ball. Match up with Baker. Joe Tong. Tong's going to force away. It's going to be a push on the floor beforehand. Kim Shepard's going to get called. Kevin Duffy and his squad after losing in a humble effort against the Fanshawe Falcons. Try to respond here on your Saturday evening. Sam Pocknick. A big reason why to this point. Deep three. That's going to be into the hands of a Knight on the play after it looks like the Mountaineers initially had it. Stretch out that pass to Baker. Baker forces a shot up. Not good. Ball on the floor. Into the paint. Stees. Secures her own rebound. Ten on the shot clock. And a nice little floater in the middle lane off the right hand. Kim Shepard, second consecutive basket. Shepard making the most of her minutes here in this contest. Came into the game only averaging 17 and a half minutes per game. Everything missed on that shot opportunity. To retain possession are the Mountaineers. Lucky for them, about an eighth of a second difference between the shot clock and the game clock right now. So theoretically, Mohawk can hold out here and have the last possession of the quarter. There's two seconds to shoot. My apologies, read that completely wrong. Shot up, and that is missed. Knights have it. Okay, stretch out less to Baker. Baker's pocketing, two stars going at it. Baker kicks it back out. Into the hands of Mohawk. Pocketing has it, seven seconds. Match up with Alkai to Hughes, back to Pocketing. Uncontested, Sam Pocketing with a foul on the floor. It's gonna be as she went up on the play, Steez with the foul. Sam Pockner is going to head to the line with three seconds left in this third quarter. And she has had a wonderful third quarter, to say the least. So Mohawks lead as big as 10 at one point, back down to four, pending the two free throws. Pockernick trying to cap off a tremendous third quarter. She does on that one. Baker's going to have to hoist a prayer from half. It's going to hit the top of the scoreboard area. That'll signal the end of three. The Mountaineers on top, 41 to 36. Looking at the other end, Sam Pockernick with a tremendous third quarter going on the reverse layup opportunity to foul there. She's beating them from beyond the arc and then even securing the rebound. And right now, you know, it's the end of the third quarter. If you haven't had an opportunity and you're in the building right now, or if you have time to come over, you gotta come check out the clothing area right now. 
Mohawk College is putting their products on display. $20 for jackets and hoodies as part of Open House Weekend. You got track pants, you got jackets, you got hoodies. You like the cold weather, you like the warm weather. I mean, they've got it all here at Debark, and this material will be out for the second game as well. So come on, make on your way down here to the Debark, check out the game, grab some Mohawk College gear, and join us on the court. Right now for the Knights, it's been a struggle of a third quarter to say the least. They did get 18 points in that third quarter, but the shooting percentage has been steady as it goes. Third quarter stats for you. Tia Stees, the leading scorer, 16 points and seven rebounds, while Hannah Baker has eight points and eight rebounds. Looking over at Mohawk College, leading score, score while well, I keep talking about Sam Pockernick, and for good reason. She's nine of 20 from the field for 22 points and seven rebounds, and hate double fidget digits in the rebounding department already. Beth Minnelli, four points and 10 rebounds and four assists. So Kevin Duffy and his squad gotta be happy right now with what's going on here at the D-Bar. Leanna Hughes, only three points, but eight rebounds to this point. The Mountaineers getting it done on the glass, out rebounding the Knights by 13, and they've cleaned up on the turnovers for the most part. After seven turnovers in the first quarter alone, they've only had nine the rest of the way. We're about to begin the fourth quarter here at the D-Bark, courtesy of m -Link Sports and Entertainment, bringing you through OCAA action here on your Saturday evening. Mountaineers trying to get a split in the home series they had this week, losing the contest on Tuesday to the Fanshawe Falcons, trying to respond here on the weekend. On open house weekend, to say the least, that backdoor cut available again, and another convert, this time Beth Minnelli via Hughes. Good start to the fourth quarter. Kevin Duffy and the squad. Knights trying to knight a comeback. Alkayad has the ball over to Baker. Baker on the left wing, tries to skip it across the pond, she does. Forcing her way into Stefan, kicks it back out. Two on the shot clock, Shaw's gonna have to be hoisted. That's through, Samantha Bapti with her first basket of the contest. Oh, Todd finds Andreas right open, she blows it. My goodness, it doesn't get any easier than that if you're Emily Andreas. Seeing light at the end of the tunnel and then got blindsided by the opportunity. Nonetheless, the opportunity lies ahead for the Mountaineers. They remain up by five, 43-38. Andreas gonna try and make it up on the defensive end against Baker. Ball swung over, al has the ball. Looking back to her for Baker. Ends up to Baker in the right corner. Minnelli pushing in the other way, blows by Baker. Sizes up her man, creates contact, no basket, to Otong, foul. Otong's gonna draw on the foul on Kim Shepard. Otong, a spark in the offense for the Mountaineers. Coming into the game, just averaging three points by a hustle and key role player. You can see there Kevin Duffy Coaching Abby Bennett through during that free throw, and that's what good coaches do. No matter what the situation, there's always an opportunity to be coaching. A five foot seven guard trying to make it happen here at the line and extend the lead. <laughs> Noise starting to pick up here at the D bar. Mountaineer faithful starting to enjoy what they see. They have been all night. Six point lead right now for the Mountaineers who have been leading for the majority of the contest. Baker's just sidestep, Euro step into the lane. She's gonna get not fouled on the play, misses the shot. Bennett with the rebound. Just change of pace. Passes right to Alki, I thought she had Otong. Three on two to Baker. Baker, double team, goes up with the left hand, shot missed. 
Andres. Hughes. He's looking for Otong back door to Minnelli. Otong's gonna get the dribble handoff. Just take the screen from Hughes. Hughes slips to lane, Otong to the floor. Minnelli into the lane. Off two feet, shot missed. Alkai forces her way through. Otong with the rebound. Minnelli with the push off on Baker. He matched up with Alkai over to Otong. 2-3 zone, the guy attacked the middle. Andreas with the pump fake. The stutters, good cross over right to left, tries to match up with her man, kicks out to Bennett. Bennett, deep three, off the front rim. Baker, try to get it done for the Knights, who trail by six. Time starting to tick off. Eight on the shot clock. Got to get a shot off. Baker off the one foot. Missed, and then a rebound is missed. Middley ends up with the ball. Stretch outlet to Hughes. Hughes with the layup. That's good. Kersey the kick of Kevin Duffy on the sideline. That is a happy moment for his squad. Could be eight. They we're looking for a timeout on the floor. The horn sounded on that play. Error on the scorekeeping table. It's going to still queue a pair of substitutions because of the stoppage in play. So Pokernik is going to check back into the game for the Mountaineers. Otong with those hands spread out wide, as is Pokernik. Trying to prevent them coming into the lane. Baker on the left wing. Into Steez, who sealed Hughes off beautifully on the play. And Steez, Tia Steez has had quite an evening, folks. Full court, two, three zone press right now. Otong paddles the sideline, ends up in the hands of Hughes. Hughes, turnover, bailed out by the foul call from Samantha Bapti, much to the dismay of the coaching staff of the Knights. So there'll be a timeout on the floor. Mohawk leads by six, 46 to 40. Tia Stees, what a contest. 18 points now at least, and seven rebounds. Had 16 coming into the fourth quarter. A beautiful seal on that last play. Kevin Duffy drawing up some action right now on the offensive end. It's always in those first offensive sets where you see the creativity of a coach coming out of a timeout. The backdoor cuts have started to fade for the Mountaineers. The Knights have started to figure it out. And for the Knights, Michael Beccaria and his squad They've got to find an answer. They're only down six, but they've never truly been able to tie this game up again since the second quarter. Leads big, as big as 10 at some points for the Mountaineers. You see that backdoor cut I mentioned earlier, Minnelli on the backdoor there. It's that high post action, skipping across the pond of the Knights. And see that double team coming. Someone's got to flash into the lane. They have Baker there, tried to find her. It's too late on that play. Still get the basket regardless. So 6-11 in this contest here at the Debark on your Saturday evening. Mountaineers trying to cap off a successful open house weekend with a win. It's gonna be off the foot of al on the play. Shot clock will reset because of that automatically. So in that case, if it was at 16, it would go back to 24. Because it's under 14 seconds, it resets to 14. Hughes with the ball. Finds Pokernik. Good thing defender wasn't looking. Could have had a stolen ball. D3, Sam Pokernik! My goodness, Sam Pokernik. What did you have for breakfast this morning? Because you are eating up the floor right now. Single-handedly carrying this Mountaineers team on her back this evening. Nine-point lead. Hughes has it on the turnover. Football pass to Pocknick. Three-on-one pulls it up. 
Dribbling steady with that right hand over to Hughes. Back to back. Into the hands of Steez. al Qaeda has the ball, pushing the pace. They gotta get back into this game, down nine. Going into the lane, in and out. Stefan. The Yates. Yates taped up on that left hamstring area. Oh, Tong with a pass deflection block. 2-1, give it go. 2-1 Tong, up and in. That's as good as it gets in transition, folks. Sam Pocknick, 2-0 Tong. And the Mountaineers convert again. The noise continues to be loud here at the D bar. Mountaineers looking to win one here on your Saturday evening. Bennett has a rebound. Full court pass to Parker. It tipped around. She juggles it, catches it. She's going to get fouled on the play. Sam Pockernick with the football-like adjustment and mid-air on that play. Able to juggle that ball halfway through, still has the inside positioning on that play. Good idea to box out and gets fouled on the play and will head to the line for two. Pockernick, the game's leading scorer at 22, coming into the third quarter. Steez eventually found Akaya, he's got to push it. That's been read beautifully by Beth Middley. Middley, four on one the other way to Hughes, up and in. Mohawk starting to send the mountain here. Just over four minutes, up 14, their biggest lead of the game. What will the Knights do? Deep three, that's short. Bennett. Over and back on the play, took too long, was looking for Pockernick initially. And because of that, it's gonna be a turnover. Dranson's gonna check back into the game as is Chapanier. Minalee's gonna check out, and Hughes. Yates gonna check back into the game, the five foot five guard out of Hamilton, Ontario, the first year of eligibility. Okay, and uh, five foot five guard out of St. Catharines checks out. Reynolds, Yates, Stefan, Baker, Steez, up and in. Coaches talk about five players touching the ball in the one possession. That's how you do it right there. That's not how you break a press either. Baker tried to get it to Yates. Pockernick with a hustle at the end, preventing back-to-back -back buskets. Steez has it, uncontested, missed. Fighting for the rebound, Chapinier going at it. Oh, careful, the elbow there against Sierra Stefan. It's gonna be possession arrows gonna favor the Knights. Alkai is getting stretched on a table beside me here. Might have pulled something. Might be in the quad right now. Shot's gonna be forced up. That's gonna be hobbled around. Pockernick's gonna end up with it. Sam Pockernick takes the stream from Chapinier. He's gonna drive in the right line over to Andreas. Right in their basic set are the Mountaineers. Chapinier, he's got top of the key. Andres looks for the back door. Shot to Pocknick. We're on Tong. Got it. Didi Tong puts the finishing touches on that Bob Ross painting of a possession. Yates up and in. Coast to coast calls her own number. We're going to call a warning on the play. For Baker, had a Baker tapping the ball right at the end of that possession. So it's not going to count as a foul, but rather as a warning against the team. A second warning would lead to a technical. That full court press being used right now by Michael Bacaria and his squad. 2 2 1 full court press. 
Pakre, just swing the ball. There it is, that is how you beat it. Can they finish? No. A good looking break of the full court press. They don't finish on the other end. And coach Michael Beccaria rushing over to the table calling for a timeout and he's gonna get one. With the squad trailing by 12 with 2.35 left here in the fourth. We look at Hughes right now. He was looking for that screen from Minnelli cutting through the lane over to Pokernik. And Pokernik pull up jumper with a man in her face, nothing but net. She's been going all night. Nice little outlet pass there on the bounce pass to Didi Otong. Also converting on the free throw. That last possession, the Knights defense coming up right at the end of the play. If you're Mohawk right now, you have to beat the full court press at 2-2-1 two, two, in one of two ways. Either A, those back two players admittedly, and Pocker, they gotta be moving that ball back and forth literally by the second. It can't be in their hands for more than a second or the defense is gonna adjust. Or they gotta find someone in the middle or down the far side, but that ball is gonna be moved very quickly. The longer you hold on to the ball in a 2-2-1 two, two, full court press, the less time you have to make a proper decision and the more the defense is gonna swallow up any opportunities. So Michael Beccaria and his squad is gonna try and come out of the timeout. Trailing by 12 with 2.35 left here in the first of two contests, the male Knights, the male Mountaineers coming up at 8 p.m. on Eveling Sports and Entertainment. Yates has it. Match up with Otong. Otong forces her to the right, into the hands of Pocket. Otong jumps inside. To drive by our defender. That's a nice up and in Sierra Stefan with the pretty move. Ball's gonna be moved around. Pokernik has it. It's a shopping day. He's gonna get triple teamed. She's not careful. There's a turnover. Two on O now becomes a three on two. High off glass, Yates missed. Shopping driving those elbows. That's gotta be very, very interesting on that call. Atlanta Yates is gonna get called on the foul. Emily Chapinier is gonna be very careful when she rebounds the ball. At no point are you able to, as a rebounder, able to swing your elbows excessively on the play like that, especially if your elbows are higher up in the position. She's lucky she didn't get called. Nice little bounce pass to Pocknick, two on tongue, so long. Yates. Down 12 are the Knights. To Steez. Steez picks up her dribble. Looks like a travel. Doesn't matter. Gets the basket. So the scores table starting the clock before, right, or keeping the clock running after a made basket. That's a no no. So for folks tuning in, a time under two minutes, the clock must be stopped after every score. Minnelli, Bennett, Hughes. Hughes looked at her in the corner, off the glass, shot miss. Otog with the tip, over to Pokernik, fresh possession, 11 on the shot clock. Bennett straight away, three, got it! Deep three for the Mountaineers, and that might just seal it. Abby Bennett, straight away, three, adds on to the lead, a 13 point lead and a timeout on the floor. Michael Beccaria is gonna call one and the Knights are baffled right now with the lead going back up to double digits for the Mountaineers. The male squad getting ready over in the corner right now. See that so long, says Otong, to the chances of the Knights here on your Saturday evening. They've been able to break the press successfully. They've been able to convert on some great opportunities. And quite frankly, Sam Pokernik has been outstanding in this contest. You can't defend a score sometimes, no matter how hard you try. And that is what has happened tonight. A score is scoring at will. Coming into the third, fourth quarter, Sam Pokernik had 22 points. That was one off 
per season average, well into the 30 mark at this point. Male Dioneers, as you can see in the background there, their orange warm-ups getting ready for their contest against the Male Knights coming up here at 8 p.m. on Emling Sports and Entertainment. About 116 left in this contest. Can Atlanta Yates and company figure it out? Off the inbound to Baker. Baker matched up with Pucknick into Stee. Stee's double teamed on the play. Billy on the floor, ball on the floor. Possession arrow's gonna favor Mohawk. So a turnover, good job by the Mountaineers. Interesting they didn't go for a three-pointer at this point, trying to force the ball into the low post area where Stees has been getting double teamed quite often lately. Reynolds subbed off but is still awaiting. Coach pushes it right by the scores table. A timeout on the floor. Kev Duffy calls it. So the crowd. Positive crowd vibes here. Kevin Duffy and his squad clinging on right now to a comfortable 13 point lead. A big response after being blown out of the waters on Tuesday evening by the Fanshawe Falcons. Yes, the Mohawk Mountaineers are a young squad, but they are also the bronze medalists last year. And this will be a good swing in the right direction, splitting their home series this week. For the Knights, they came into the contest trying to spoil open house weekend. Looks like the doors are closed for their entrance into the Wake Column. Trail by 13 unless a miracle is to happen in the last minute here at the D-Bar. Michael Beccaria making sure his coach, his teammates, his players get all the points needed heading into the final minute 10 here. Minnelli's gonna be getting it right by the crowd area just above the free throw line extended. <laughs> to find Hughes. Hughes looked for Pockernick, who was thinking about back door. Find so tug back door. So long. The Knights not paying attention to get off the inbounds. And DDO Tog slips back door and converts. Steez pass intercepted. Baker trying to find her in the post again. We're gonna run the clock down here on this possession. Tog's got a matchup with Baker. For the Hughes to Middley. Middley to Bennett. Ball's gonna be stripped. Okay, it's got it. Three on one. Over to Baker. Baker's gonna create contact against Middley. He's gonna head to the line. Here come the noisemakers. And it works on that play. Steez with the rebound though. Shot missed. It's her own hands out of bounds. Tia Steez tried to do what she can. But it will be a little too much, too little, too late. 63-48, the Mountaineers lead and they're gonna walk out here on the D-Mark on your Saturday evening with a well-deserved victory. Otong's got it, two seconds between the shot clock and the game clock. Parker next gonna dribble this ball out. Don't be surprised, she just hoists a prayer. Houston's gonna end up deep, left wing three. Into the hands of Middley, gets it. Clock stopped. And that is the finishing touch on a beautiful painting. That is the victory for the Mountaineers. The Mohawk Mountaineers take the 6 p.m. contest, 65. 48 over the Niagara Knights. Sam Pokernick, the complete player of the game, if you ask me, leading her team throughout the evening, did it from the inside, did it from the outside, and the Mountaineers reached the mountain here on this evening after getting humbled on Tuesday evening and a good response by Kevin Duffy and his squad.
for the Knights. TSD is an unbelievable night, as is Hannah Baker, but just not enough. They could not figure out how to defensively slow down Sam Pockernick and the rest of the Mountaineer squad, who is all smiles following this victory. Male squad getting in on the high fives as well. That's what you like to see. Sportsmanship, engagementship to its finest. You see Sam Pockernick all evening doing it. Abby Bennett capping off the finishing touch there, straight away three. They force the ball to Yates, a little too much into Steez, middle on the floor for that one, the hustle. And then again, once again, Hughes had the ball. So the Mohawk Mountaineers walk away in a victorious faction here on your Saturday evening. The first of two contests between the Mohawk Mountaineers and the Niagara Knights. The final score in this one, 63 to 48 are the Mountaineers over the Niagara College Knights. Action coming up just under 20 minutes here on Emily Sports and Entertainment. For Greg Campbell and the rest of the crew, we'll see you back soon, and thanks for tuning in.
You are looking and listening live to the sights and sounds here at the Deep Park Arena. The game of a back-to-back -back between the Knights and the Mountaineers coming up right now are the male sides for both parts. The Lady Mountaineers took the game one victory, and now it's the men's turn starting for the Mountaineers, Emmanuel Otong, Milos Mladjan, Kujo Masoka, Matt Foster, and Aaron Case, who comes back from being out up until the preseason, and Coach Brian Jonker said he's going to be a key because defensively he's excellent as well as handling the ball. We're up and underway. So we're going to get a violation right on the start of that play. Mladjan double tips the ball, which you're not allowed to do in the center logo off the initial touch. So the Knights will begin possession. Johnny Richardson, the star, Van Hutchinson Jr. is one of the key players, six foot five guard out in the Seoul Bahamas in his fourth year, Alex Elliott, Kevin Cooper, and Jordan McDonald. Mountaineers with the pressure early on. Straight away three off the front when missed by Richardson. Here's his own rebound. Up to his teammate, high off glass, McDonald with the opening bucket, the fourth year forward out Mississauga. Case is going to try to make a case in this contest to etch his name into the books. Otong, right wing three off the left side. Otong injured in the last contest in the waning stages, still used that adrenaline to finish the contest. Looks okay here early on, a lot of bounce in his step. Niagara trying to penetrate that zone, it's going to be kicked out to Richardson. Three, in and out. Lanchon tipping that around, gets it. Over to Otong. We'll talk back to Blanchard, up and in! That's how you start Saturday evening entertainment here at the D Park. 2 2 here early on at the D Park. Mountaineers, Knights going at it here on Emling Sports and Entertainment. Jumper didn't call bank, but it is open. McDonald with the second basket in the contest. Pull up, right wing three. High off the rim, hits the top of the backboard. That's going to be out of bounds. Pull up three on the play by the Mohawk Mountaineers. Goes to no avail. Kujo Masuka, the 6'4", guard out Brampton in his first year. Coach Brian Jonker said they have 11 first-year players as that long two is drained. They have 11 first-year players. And games like Tuesday, where they lost at the very end on the buzzer are indicative of two things. One, there's gonna be a lot of growing pains with the young team and we saw that they're down by as much as 24. But two, he was proud of the fact that they didn't give up. Lanshawn, deep three on the right wing. So he's got all five of Mohawk's points to start this contest. So Jonker said it's a good thing they didn't quit and they're showing it here early on. Five, six the lead for the Knights, rebound. Over to Case. Case alley -oop to Otong over his head. Stretch outlet the other way. Hutchinson Jr. has it. He's going to take off a just midair. Beautiful move up and under Kujo Masuka. Foster. Rotong. No one matches him. In and out. Rebound. Masuka. Over to Blanchard. Foul. Going up to hit him. Jordan McDonald, who's had five points already for the Knights. So Milos Blanchard picking up where he left off on Tuesday evening, where he was all over the highlight packages in terms of blocks, coming into the game, averaging 13 points a game in and out on the first one, shooting 43% from the field and averaging seven rebounds a game. Also has three blocks a game. We'll see how many he can add to that total tonight. Foster, match up, nice little crossover by Elliott. He's gonna kick it back out. Richardson, double teamed in that two, three high zone going right now by the Knights. Trying to look back door are the Knights. Pull up jumper, deep three, hits off the front rim. Ball tipped out of bounds, Mohawks. Not much going at the end there for Kevin Cooper, the 6'8 forward of Bahamas. Had no choice but to host that deep range three. You see in the background, fans got the orange clappers going on. They're gonna need the noise tonight. 
Case matched up with McDonald over to Otong. Otong off there at the left hand, spinning around the world, making a couple guys dance into the hands of Richardson. Richardson over to his teammate, nice adjustment with the aforementioned Hutchinson. It's gonna actually be a charge. So Aaron Case making his case defensively early on, improving Brian Jonkere. And you see that give and go and the easy basket on the play by the Mount in the Knights and Jordan McDonald. McDonald, a couple of adjustments, a couple of easy looks at the net. So far, Jonker said in this contest, they rebound very well and they create good shots inside the lane. Foul on the floor. Talking to Brian Jonker before the game, he said offensively they need to share the ball and they need to spread the ball. That's the key to this game in terms of moving that Niagara coach, de Niagara defense. And defensively, they need to rebound the ball and they need to force shots like they do at the end of possessions. The Bahamas native is going to force into lane and dress off the mid left foot. Sean's fumbled around, almost stripped on the play. Rajon has it, saving it on the play was Hutchinson into the lane, high off glass. Kevin Cooper out of the Bahamas, third year forward, 6'8 with the basket. High off glass, nice response on the other end, Kujo Bosoka. Masuka, the fourth lead scorer on this team, actually averaging 12.3 points per game and shooting 50% from the field. Ball's in the hands of Hutchinson Jr. Pulls up, kicks it over. Elliott, in. Little side at the end there, deep three. Alex Elliott, the six foot one guard out of Welland in his third year of eligibility. Masuka. Bounce it outside, pass intended for Otong. Two on two the other way. Elliott, high off class shot is trying to be blocked. Elliott converts. 15 to eight. The lead is seven, the largest of the game. Lajon with an ugly shot on that play. Elliott ends up with it. Elliott with that left dribble crossover. So he kick it back, Cooper. Over to Hutchinson. To Richardson, Richardson pull up jumper, no one accounts for him in an easy basket as you'll get for Johnny Richardson, the second year guard out of Niagara. Case, Foster. Foster, deep three from Otong. Shot miss. Going in to strip the ball to play. Musuka ends up fouling Cooper. That's going to cue substitutions from both sides. Checking into the game. This is going to be Livingston Bromwell, the six foot four forward out of Bahamas. And number five, Kevshawn Panache, the 5'11 guard out of Markham. The Knights have four guys from the same time out of Nassau, Bahamas. Stefan Augustine, the only one yet to see action. Elliott with the miss, rebound on the play. Padache. Padache is going to pull up. Misses completely into the hands of Musuka. Musuka, high off class, nice power move. Blows by the defender at Bromwell and a pretty finish. Behind the back, adjust midair, blocked on the play, goes up, foul. So Van Hutchinson Jr. takes the shot, miss, adjusts midair, secures his own rebound. One of the issues Brian Jonker said his team had to clean up on this contest. We take a look at Phil Mosley coaching up three players along the sideline right now as they come back out on the floor. His squad leading 17 to 10. Van Hutchinson Jr., the lead scorer for the Knights, averaging 23 points a game, shooting 45% of the field. Misses both on that play, ends up getting the ball in his hands. Off the left hand, with the glasses off, and he converts. Van Hutchinson Jr. sporting the face mask here early on. And maybe it's the Mohawk Mountaineers that want to cover themselves with them one and not look at what's going on because they're getting blown out of the water here early on. A push off. It's going to be called on the night. 
So Tuesday's contest, the Mountaineers came in down by as much as 24 at one point in the contest before mounting a comeback and falling ultimately short just at the buzzer. They're trying to write a different script this evening. The question is, will the finish be the same? Otong matched up on the left side with Padache. So get Padache in the air and kick it back out. Ball kicked into the inside. Spin move up and missed. Ball fumbled around. Shot missed on the play by John Dolmage. Nice transition the other way. Shot missed. Mohawk trying to respond. Richardson has it. And at the end of that one, Terrence Lennox has no choice but to reach in on Johnny Richardson. A bit of frustration for the Mountaineers at this point. I guess a pair of substitutions right now. Jordan McDonald's going to be coming into the contest as is 21 for the first time. Dave DJ Morrison, the 5'10 guard out of Scarborough in his fourth year of eligibility. And checking out is Johnny Richardson as well as Alex Elliott. DJ had the ball, threw it off the foot of Lennox. My apologies, of Richards. The Mountaineers getting doubled up right now, 20 to 10. 307 left in the first quarter. You're watching OCAA men's basketball here on M League Sports and Entertainment. They're finally gonna get a foul on the floor after it's been fumbled all over the place. Phil Mosley urging the referees how a foul was called in that situation because neither team really had controlled the ball. Nonetheless, it's gonna end up in the hands of Brian Jonker's team. Tong is gonna send it over to Foster. Foster, the paint. Kicks it out back to Foster. Richards had the ball, deep three, Otong off the rim. Richards trying to find the rebound, almost did. Hutchinson Jr. calling his own number. Left hand, he's gonna scoop it. The ball's gonna get kicked back out. DJ's got the ball. Euro step up and under. That's gonna be missed. He's gonna be hustling for the rebound as Richardson, Hutchinson Jr. It's gonna be out of bounds. Male Mountaineers try to avoid the same fate as the ladies, or sorry, try to get the same result as the ladies in a victory here on Saturday evenings. Richards misses the shot, fall up, rebound shot is missed. Foster ends up with the ball. Deep three, rebound, Richards up and in. Malik Richards, the 6'3 guard out, Corpus Christi Burlington converts. Hutchinson Jr.'s got it. He's gonna bounce into the paint for McDonald. McDonald's gonna work on his man, Dolmage. Gets by Dolmage, and a pretty move. Pace being pushed by the Mountaineers. Dolmage found out wide open the net, under the net, shot missed. They foul at the end of that. A little bit of slap on the play by John Dolmage, who's a 6'7", fourth year forward out of Bramford North Park. So Hutchinson Jr. is going to check out. Kevin Cooper, the third year, 6'8 forward out Bahamas, is going to check back in. Knights trying to extend that lead. 22 to 12, they lead. Ball swung around the world. It's going to end up in the corner. Shot miss. Put back, almost in. Mohawk's gonna end up with the rebound in the hands of Richards. Richards over to Mahjong. Back to Case. Case is gonna drive into lane, creates contact. It's gonna be a push off before any movement. Was looking for Milos Mahjong on that pick and roll. It's gonna be, we're gonna call a shot on the play. So that case right there we're looking at it earlier. No control on the floor by either side. You could argue the Knights had possession for a second. Foul was called ultimately on Niagara on the play. Her shot is in and out. Aaron Case playing for the first time this year after playing in the preseason and then being injured for the team's opener. Mlajan 
Almost had the offensive putback, didn't happen on that case. Padache pulls up against Foster to kick it out. DJ, deep three, hits the front rim. Okay, end up back in the hands of another deep three. Padache misses a third rebound. Third time's the charm, nope, maybe four. He's gonna get double defenders on him. Livingston Bromwell is gonna head to the line. So the ball being tipped around by the Mountaineers, and as Brian Jonker said before the game, they had to box out. They haven't done a good job of that so far, and a lot of second chance opportunities for the Knights. Bromwell, the team's third leading scorer, averaging 14.7 points a game, shoots 61% from the field, and averaging nine rebounds a game, as well as 1.7 steals a game. Under a minute here at the D-bar. We're gonna call, it's gonna be a shot clock issue, so similar to the ladies game, a shot clock issue going on here at the D-bar. We're gonna reset that to 19 seconds. Brian Jogger a little perplexed to say the least in terms of his team's slow start here on your Saturday evening. You're watching OCA men's basketball action here at the D-Bar courtesy of Evelyn Sports and Entertainment. Nice slip underneath, Lajon finds his teammate in Lennox and that's what the Mountaineers need to do more of. Knights trying to bounce out the other way, turnover. Lajon's got it. He's gotta be careful where he's going. Richards, Richards don't look to Lajon, ball tipped around to Foster, Foster back to Lajon, reverse layup in and out. Ten on the shot clock. DJ's got the ball. DJ Morrison kicks it into the lane. Spin move, McDonald up and out. Second, just get that out of here! Milos Mwajan with the rejection at the end of the first quarter, an emphatic end to the disappointing first quarter for the Mountaineers as they trail the Niagara Knights 24 to 14. And a foul on the floor there. Milos Majan trying to do his part here early on, but the transition game of the Knights is working here early and often. You look at those easy pull-up jumpers for the Knights. They haven't had a lot of contested shots in the lane. They've been able to assert the shots they've wanted to at this point. And the Mountaineers are playing the Knights game to say the least. We can call it a game of chess, if you will. And the Knights so far have made all the right moves. It's open house weekend here at Mohawk College. The men's and ladies volleyball teams playing in action earlier this afternoon. Meanwhile, the Lady Mountaineers winning the previous game. And we're gonna take a look at some of the out of town scores when we get an opportunity as Brian Jonker coaching his team through right now in between the quarter, down by 10. The Mountaineers welcoming fellow alumni athletes that are in the building this evening. For Phil, Coach Phil Mosley talked about before the game that transition was gonna be the key to this game for his team. They like to get out and run the floor when they get the ball. And he said, frankly, their defense leads to their offense. Their best offense is their defense. So anytime they can rebound quickly and play tough, tenacious defense, well, that springs the offense literally in the transition game the other way. So the Knights have made the right moves so far here in this contest and lead by 10. Second quarter action underway here at the D-bar. Otogs has started off with the jumper near the free throw line, shot missed. Elliott's got it. He's gonna lob it over, Hutchinson Jr. Scoop pass underneath. He's gonna try and finish on the play. It was, it was Cooper gonna call a foul on the play as Hutchinson had the ball. 
So Milos Mahajan is going to get called for the foul. Van Hutchinson Jr. is going to head back to the line for two. Looking at the first core stats, Van Hutchinson and Cooper tied at five points apiece, as well as three rebounds apiece. The league score, Jordan McDonald with six points for the Knights. He's also the player to watch as the second shot is missed. They're going to call it a violation early entrance by the Mountaineers. Looking on the other side, Milos Blajan leads away six points, three boards for the Mountaineers. And Kujo Masuka has four points and four rebounds. So again, early entrance. Two freebies now. So Will Hutchinson Jr. make him pay with the third. The 6'5", fourth year guard of Nassau Bahamas at the line. It's the front rim. Lajon gets his man in the air, high off glass, shot miss, secures his own rebound up, second time, tip third, ball all over the floor, who's got it? It's the Knights. Emmanuel Otong thought it went off a Knights defender at the end, hesitated, ends up in the hands of Niagara. Miscommunication on the full court press. Can the Knights make him pay? No, they can't. They're gonna be saved, the Mohawk Mountaineers, by a tipped ball out of bounds by Jordan McDonald. Team's lead score through one quarter here at the D-Bar. Lajon has the ball to spin. He's gonna get him up and under his shot's gonna be partially blocked. Here's a rebound. Kicks it back out. Otong straight away three. Straight into the back of the net. Manuel Otong doing his part, having a huge game on Tuesday night, trying to pick his team slack up here in the second quarter. Bowling his way through and missing the shot was McDonald. It's gonna be Knight's ball still. Coach Phil Mosley telling Jordan McDonald to finish on the play. They've done a good job of it so far, being up by seven. McDonald has it. Off the right hand, off the left foot, and in. Manuel Otong, his teammate. Masuka has it. Straight away three, fades back. Shot rebound by McDonald. Hutchinson Jr. has it. They get the screen from Cooper. The ball's gonna be stripped on the play. Behind the back, a little dribble drive, Masuka. To the hands of Case. Case is going to get fouled. <laughs> Livingston Bromwell going to check back into the game. McDonald's going to check out. You're watching OCAA men's basketball here on M Links Sports and Entertainment. Greg Campbell bringing you through the play by play action. Mayo you know, Otong's going to bounce it to Foster. Foster back to Otong. Going to get blocked on the play. Two on O, two on one the other way. Fumbling the ball on the play, Elliott. Fortunately for the Mohawk Mountaineers, it goes their way. Case, Mladjan. Back up to Case. Takes the screen from Otong. He's going to seal it to paint and kicks out. Mladjan left wing three off the front rim. Rebound Hutchinson Jr. Looks behind his back, no one there. Outlet to LeCole. Back to LeCole. Short. Short shot on the play by Daniel Lacoli. The second year six foot one guard, Ella Welland, Ontario. Foster to Kaimasuka up and in. Elliott, bounce pass off the foot of Case on that play. Harrison's gonna check into the game for Foster. Luckily, inbounds it. Elliott, right wing three, right by the coach's bench. High point in the rebound, there's no one on that play. It's gonna go out of bounds. Mosley company 
imploring that it was off a of Mohawk defender's hands. Not going to happen. Turn around, jumper, good. Kujo Masuka calling for the ball and converts after calling for it. Assistant Junior dumps it into the paint. Bromwell forces his way through up. Shot miss, Blanchon in on it. Rebound, Case got it. Case pushing it, a T on the floor. It's gonna be a technical foul on Phil Mosley on the play. It was screaming for a foul after that last transition play by the Knights. The players gotta be careful too, they could get teed up as well. So Emmanuel Otong will head to the line for one. Otong on the year, the team's lean point score as he makes that one, averaging 21 points per game, shoot 39 percent from the field, including 78% from the free throw line. And does Coach Phil Mosley have a case on that one, on the push off? Yeah, I'm not sure about that one. But that's why I'm over here and he's on the bench. The officials are where they are. And where you are, we thank you for tuning in to M-Link Sports and M Entertainment as you're watching OCA men's basketball action here on your Saturday evening at the D-Bar. Niagara College leads the Mohawk Mountaineers currently 26-22 with 6.28 left here in the first half. Brian Jonkiner's team coming off a loss Tuesday evening, trying to climb back into this game. Not as big as a 24 point hole gap, but still a deficit none the least. Otong off the glass and in. So they're gonna call a delay of game on Mohawk for slapping the ball at the end, preventing the quick transition inbound from the Knights. And it's gonna be a timeout on the floor. So we've had a couple of interesting calls in this game. We've had the double tip to begin this contest. We've had a delayed warning, delay of game warning called against the Mountaineers and we've already had a technical. And that's all in the first half, folks. You normally don't even see a combination of those three throughout any game. You got the rebound going on there and the converted basket by the Knights. And then on the other end for Mohawk, a nice up and under by Masuka on the play. He's been a bright spot so far for the Mountaineers. Phil Mosley and his squad were out by as much as 10 at one point. The lead is down to four. Coming out of this timeout, we'll see what they draw up here on the chalkboard. It's a two point lead. Correction. Thank goodness for graphics sometimes because where this table set up right now, depending which way I look, I've got either one score or both of the scores locked out. Elliot has the ball, he's gonna hand it off to a teammate. Into the middle lane, nice adjustment, shot partially blocked on the play from Bromwell. Harrison the other way, to Blanchon, took two steps, get that out. Big block. On the play, Kevin Cooper. Mladjan saw an opening. Cooper closed the door quickly. It'll be a offensive foul on the box out on that play. Aaron Case, the second year guard out of Brampton, St. Michael's. So full court press is going to be used by Mohawk right now. 1-2-2 two, two, full court press. It's a soft 1-2-2 two, two press though. I don't know where they're trying to go with it. More of a prevent it looks like than anything. So the 1-2-2 two, two being used as a prevent to set up into their 2-3 zone. Driving to lane Richardson, kicks it out. Elliott, left wing, got it. Alex Elliott with a quiet but efficient evening. The third year guard out well in Ontario. Otong, trying to find Harrison. Does. Harrison's gonna drive in the lane off the left hand. Kicks out of Mlajan. Deep three. 
off the far side. Richardson Jr. with the rebound. Hutchinson Jr. No look, pass! Big layup. Cooper thought about the dunk, ended up laying it in. Al Kevin Cooper and company starting to ramp it up once again. Six point lead. Pretty little spin move in and out of the toilet bowl. Now the Mohawk has it, a technical on the play. If you couldn't hear that, I will not repeat it because it would be simply censored. But Kujo Masuka yelling explicit after securing that rebound off a Knights player. And those are the kind of mistakes a young team is going to make. And the result is one shot at the line for Alex Elliott and possession for the Knights. Elliott coming into the contest, averaging nine points a game, shooting 60% from the free throw line, 42% from the line. So the possession actually remains with Mohawk on the play as through OCAA rules. I'm pretty sure in FIBA, if that's called, then it would be a turnover of possession. Case is gonna be matched up right now with Richardson to try and shove off and create contact. They find Otong back door. Otong creating the body, fading away with the Kobe jumper, no. Tip missed, tipped third time, missed again. Musuka trying to get in, and it's gonna be not an and one. Otong imploring for it. It's gonna be a push, the ball is gonna end up on the sideline. The foul is going to be on Kevin Cooper, the third year, 6'8", forward out of Bahamas. Checking back into the game. Checking into the game for the first time, Jose Ramos, the six-foot guard out of Mississauga, Ontario, in his first year. Seeing his first time of action this evening. Stutter step, power move by Lennox. Picks up his dribble. Ramos was all over him. Now it's Richardson in case. Case, making his case into the lane, high off glass and missed. Stretch outlet, Hutchinson Jr. Scoops it back across his body. Ball fumbled around into the hands of the Knights. Tried to scoop it underneath into the hands of Mlajan. Case, three on two, four on two, new lock pass to Lennox in the corner. He's gonna drive into the lane, high off the glass. Terrence Lennox with the basket. The lead cut to four. 30 to 26. Trying to maneuver through that zone, Otong ends up with the steal. He's gonna fake the shot, dumps it underneath, reverse layup. Beautiful play, Milos Mlajan off the fake shot from Emmanuel Otong. Got the defender's eyes looking, no one accounted for Mlajan in the backcourt. Underneath the basket, correction. Pair substitutions coming for the Knights. Richardson has it. Dribble on a string. Right wing three, deep. Wow, nothing but net. Livingston, Bromwell from the land beyond. Case kicks it to Otan, gets his man in the air. Pull up three, shot missed. Rebound, Hutchinson Jr. Stretch outlet to Bromwell. Tipped over to Ramos. Ramos is gonna try and blow by, Mlajan thought better of it. Finds a streaky man cutting through. Ends up in the hands of Hutchinson in and out off the left hand. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a kicked ball on the play. Off the night, and it's gonna be Mohawks. Checking into the game, Dave DJ Morrison. As well as Kevin Cooper. Masuka checking out of the game for the Mountaineers, as is Case. Lennox has the ball, match up with Richardson. Lennox, stutter step over Richardson, picks up his dribble. Dolmar throws it off the defender in McDonald on the play. He's gonna keep possession. 
Foster with the inbound. Dolmage with the spinoff. Over to Lennox, matchup with Richardson. Ball's gonna be swung around. Foster, pocket right corner three, long. DJ's got it. The scoop it under. Ends up in the hands. Richardson, deep three, missed. Lennox, push it. They go in the middle of the court, kicks it to Foster, pocket right corner, off the side of the rim, off the backboard. Ugly looking shot in transition by the Mountaineers. They've got to clean that up, being down five. Padache is going to check back into the game. Richardson is out in a timeout on the floor, called by Brian Jonker. Brian Jonker and his team being down by as much as double digits have cut the lead only to five, but with 2.09 left here in the first half, his team needs to establish more of a rhythm, and his team is not looking as fluid offensively as they were in their last game. On the other side, Phil Mosley and his crew, they've got a five-point lead with just over two minutes left in the first half, but it's been scoring by committee, and that's what he talked to me about before the game. He says his team, their bench runs five to six players deep, and you're seeing that with the consistent rotations from the Knights, but also who's getting the ball. They're spraying the love. You're seeing three or four Knights touch the ball basically every possession. And these guys from the Bahamas, they all have fed off each other and played off each other's strengths and abilities. Growing up in the same town, you know they've played a lot of basketball together growing up, and you've seen the beneficiary of this on the court. So full court, one, two, two, press. Do they get the double team on DJ? DJ gets his dribble back after attempting the pass. The blow by Oton is to skip it across court to Hutchinson Jr. Go! Oh, and the dunk! Kevin Cooper with an end one. All set up on the initial pass by DJ Dave Morrison. Cooper will head to the line for one, coming into contest, averaging nine points a game, shooting 80% from the field, just 50% from the line. Dolmer with a slight push off, gets the rebound. Lennox, matchup with DJ. High off glass and returns the favor. Anything you can do, I can do better, says Terrence Lennox. So he'll try and get that one point swing going the other way. Lennox creates contact, converts, now has heads to the line for one, averaging 15 points a game, shooting 57% from the free throw line, 43% from the field. That's good. Four point lead, Knights over Mountaineers. You're watching M League Sports and Entertainment bringing you OCAA men's basketball coverage on your Saturday evening. Greg Campbell bringing you through the play by play action. DJ into the lane, oh, behind the back pass, almost had it. Ends up in the hands of Hutchinson Jr. behind the back to the hands of McDonald. Getting fancy out here on your Saturday evening. We're not even on the dance floor, folks. Maybe it's the basketball court. DJ's got that ball. DJ tried to pass it to the corner. Back out to Hutchinson Jr. Hutchinson Jr. floater off the right foot. Missed. Otong's got it. Tong with that left hand, sizing up his man behind him. High lane, blocked on the play, McDonald. Hutchinson Jr., three on two the other way. Nice little bounce pass, high off glass, that's in. Kevin Shaw, Panache with the beneficiary. Eight point lead, Otong pull up jumper by the free throw line, nothing but that. Manny Otong doing what he can to bring his team back into this contest. Morrison. Left side, tried for McDonald, ends up in the case of Padache. That doesn't matter. Padache putting it to the Mountaineers. Lennox, no look pass underneath, Dober. Basket, and a hard fall at the end of that play. Johnny Richardson falling hard 
at the end there. My apologies, Kevin Cooper. He looks like he's gonna be okay, no worse for wear. And the Knights moving all the chess pieces here early on with a five point lead late in the first half here at the D-Bar. Morrison, match up with Lennox. And dump it into McDonald. McDonald to Patashe. Back to Morrison. Just take a stream from McDonald. DJ is going to get that ball stripped. And it's going to be out of bounds. So one last chance from the Mountaineers. Lennox looking to push the pace. I don't see why. There's 4.7 seconds left. They get that ball by the half court line. They should be okay. He's going to find Otong. No one's going to match up with Otong. Tom pull up jumper didn't get it off and that signals the end of the first half. Manny Otong thought about it, got the defender in the air, didn't think that shot was gonna get off. Takes off a little too late. The end of the first half here at the D-Mark on your Saturday evening, the Niagara Knights leading by seven. Deep three on the play by the Knights all evening, but moving the ball efficiently. Nice little slam in the end one there, and a tiptoe pass, and a finish by the Knights. So the Niagara Knights heading off to the locker room. Other OCA basketball game action. Kenador falling to George Brown, 99 to 70. Liolas defeating LaSite, 106-84. St. Lawrence falling to Algonquin, 80 to 67. Humber, a six-point win over Lampton, 102 to 96. And St. Clair over Conestoga, 94 to 70. It's a seven-point lead right now. And at the half, U of T is losing right now, or leading Salt, 32 to 27. At the half here right now, the Mountaineers trail 42 to 35. We'll be back with second half action here at the D-Bark.
inside the D-Bark. You're listening to the sights and sounds on your Saturday evening at Lynx Sports and Entertainment, bringing you Saturday evening OCAA double OCAA men's act basketball action between the Niagara College Knights and the Mohawk Mountaineers. Greg Campbell bringing you through the play-by-play. -play. The Mountaineers go into the second half, trailing by seven, 42 to 35. The key leading scorers for the Mohawk Mountaineers, Emmanuel Otong, eight points, Milos Mladzhan, eight points and six rebounds, and Kujo Masuka, eight points and eight rebounds. On the other side, looking at the Knights leading scorers, Number 33, Jordan McDonald, 10 points, two boards. Number 13, Kevin Cooper, six points, seven rebounds. And Van Hutchinson Jr., five points, five rebounds. The key difference though, I think, in that first half is really the shot selection of the three leading scores. If you look at Mohawk through that first half, their top three leading scores when it combined 33% from the field, 10 of 30. You flip that to the top scores, for the Knights, two of six from the field, four of seven, and the three of three. So very efficient are the Knights in their offensive possessions and their shot selection, and hence why they have a seven point lead heading into the third. Elliott's gonna get the inbound. Moving right to left. We're gonna get a foul right away. Nope, another shot clock. So just as young as this Mountaineer squad is the shot clock squad. A couple adjustments being made right now. It's going to be 19 they're going to have on the shot clock to be exact. Officials have had to blow that just a couple times this evening. Elliott's going to inbound the ball. Richardson's got it over to his teammate Hutchinson Jr. To the corner. Elliott's going to blow by Mlajan to kick it back out to Richardson. Back over to Hutchinson Jr. Uncontested three in and out. High point in the rebound was McDonald tipped out of bounds. Looks like off of Otong's hands. Doesn't happen. Mohawk's gonna get the ball. Case, Aaron Case making his first return to action since the preseason, trying to find a way for this team to win this game. Shot in and out on the play by Masuka. Elliott, matchup with Otong, blows by him. Use the left hand, ball stripped on the play. Masuka the other way. Blows by, left hand too strong. Richardson, blows by, right handed floater, in and out. Mlajan rebound to Otong. Otong looking for his man and Masuka intercepted Elliott. Over to McDonald, creates contact, up and in. Jordan McDonald gets the scoring started in the third quarter, the 6-3 forward out of Mississauga, Ontario in his fourth year, showing why this veteran leadership of the squad is coming through. Case gets his man up in the air over to Mahjong, kicks it to Otan, to Foster, around the world. Ends up in the hands of a deep three, got it! Three made, Kujo Masuka. Masuka coming in to the second half with eight points tied for the team lead with Emmanuel Tong and Milos Mladzhan. Ball kicked back out. Richardson Jr. thought about it. Elliott, Elliott crosses up Foster, has him on a string, in and out. Saving the ball, McDonald to Cooper. Shot missed. Strong rebound. Foster's got a chance. Euro step. Lead cut to four. Good low run by Mohawk to start this third quarter. Ball's gonna be stripped on the play, bounced around, Case into the hands of Elliott. It's gonna be a foul on the floor. Aaron Case after losing the ball, having to foul the player in Johnny Richardson for the Knights. Second year forward, second year guard, 5'11", out of Niagara Falls. 5'11 would be a very small forward to say the least in the men's game. Kids gotta have at least a 45 inch vertical if you're starting at the forward position and you're 5'11. Or you're the Warriors and you go super small lineup. So discussion on the floor right now. The crowd stuck around for the second game of a doubleheader between the Mountaineers and the Knights. You're watching Emling Sports and Entertainment bringing you OCA men's action here on your Saturday evening. 
Cooper is going to check out of the game. Richardson has it. Desal Hutchinson Jr. into the paint. Bromwell missed. A tong rebound. In case. Case blows by Richardson. Tried to pass it into the hands of Hutchinson Jr. Sweet little move. Three on one the other end. Ben Hutchinson Jr. dump off on the play up and in. Alex Elliott with the convert. Defensive chance picking up for the Knights. Lanjon ends up with the ball on the floor. It's gonna be out of bounds on the play. Otongsa just hoist up a shot for fun. So Niagara responding to the mini run by the Mountaineers. You can see Coach Brian Jonker applying his team's effort so far to this point. Not as big of a deficit as they faced in Tuesday night's action. Elliott's gonna try and extend that deficit right into the hands of his teammate. Shot missed on the play. Brahma with the miss. Case bounce pass over. Ends up with it. Back into the paint. Masuka up and in. Little hot potato give and go. Masuka and his teammate in case. And Masuka ends up with the basket. Richardson. Straight away three over Masuka. Whoa. Woo. Johnny Richardson. Cold blooded on that three pointer. Masuka with the response. Okay. Little tip for tat. Substitution by the scores table. Kevshawn Padache. Up and under. Strong move. Livingston Bromwell. Case, your step. In between two defenders is going to get fouled on the play. Ooh, a little bump too. So Case's got to be careful what he's doing there. Split the defenders in Richardson and Bromwell is going to get a chance to head to the charity stripe. A pair of substitutions coming on. Lennox is going to check into the game, as is Richards. And Aaron Case, one of the players, Coach Jonker talking about before this game that was going to be a key for them, returning after an injury from the preseason. He's the primary ball handler of the squad as well. Lead is four. Elliott over the half court line. To set up the offense on that left wing. Pressure from Lennox. Matchup zone, it looks like. 3 2 4. The Mountaineers. A block on the play initially is going to be called a foul. Emmanuel Otong. Does he get called on the follow through on that play? The reach. Substitution coming. Daniel Lacoli, 6 1 guard of Welland in his second year checking into the game. Elliott is going to check out. McDonald heads to the line for two. Averaging 10.5 points, shooting 56% from the field, only 20% from the line. Six foot three guard out of Mississauga, Ontario. That's short as well, true to its numbers. Stats don't lie. Case got a man on the string. Lennox, hand off to Richards. Richards looking for Otong, streaking through, kicks it out to Case, left wing three. We've got a Case for a game here. One point lead. Pass into the paint. Trying to finish, were the Knights a rebound on the play, strong take, a strong put back by Bromwell. Off the McDonald miss. Otong, match up with McDonald. Puts him on a handle. Fade away, got it. Manuel Otong, the 2K moves going on here. Padache over Otong, front rim. Rebound, McDonald, front rim. Knight still at possession. It's going to be offensive foul. Aaron Case trying his second charge of the game. Officials Steve Wilkie, Marley 
Kasemi and Safe Raymond taking us through Saturday evening's action. Dolzman in the corner, got it. Immediate impact made on the play by John Dolmage. Dolmage is now gonna be bodying up against Cooper. To the lane, Hutchinson Jr. shot miss. Rebound, ball on the floor, up, strong take going to the line, Livingston Bromwell. Bromwell, the team's third lean scorer, averaging just a hair under 15 points a game, shooting 67% from the line, 61 from the field. Averaging 9.3 rebounds a game, as 1.7 steals. Short on the first. So we are knotted up here at the D bar. 440 left in the third quarter. 54 all the score after Mohawk trailing by as much as six in this third. Otong over the defender shot miss. Lennox with the tough rebound going at it with Lacoli. Possession's gonna favor Mohawk. Raymond with the call there. Marley Kasemi is going to hand it off over to Emmanuel Otang. Having a little chitter chatter on the sideline there. On the end line to be exact. Richards has it. Daring him to shoot. It's going to be a push off on the back end by Case. So Case on the back end trying to cut off that screen. is going to get called for the block. Hutchinson Jr. looking for teammates back door. It's up the hands of Lacoli. Deep three made. Padache padding to the stats. Way over the head is Case for his intended target in Richards and a needless turnover to say the least for Brian Jonker and his squad. Kujo Masuka checking into the game. Knights having the paint, trying to bully their way through. Shot is up and shot is missed initially by Bromwell, rebound McDonald. Rebound Cooper on the play. Dolman's just gonna get called there. Quick inbounds, make it back to back, nope, short. Stretch outlet, Lennox the other way. Up, oh, hard foul on the play, Panache. The hard foul. Knights bench thought it was a block. They've got a block on the play. So Terrence Lennox is gonna head to the line. Lennox, the team's second lead scorer, averaging 50, 15 points per game, shooting 57% from the free throw line, 43% from the field. The 6'3", first year guard of St. Jean de Brebeuf High School trying to get this team back to a tied game. That'll help, one point lead now for the Knights. Dave DJ Morrison checking back into the game. Lacoli checking out. Lennox and DJ going at it. Morrison is dribble with that left hand. He's gonna use the screen, he's gonna pull up. Otong is gonna try and force the strip. Morrison had called for the foul. He's gotta hustle back on defense. Otong's got him on a string. Making him play to his beat of the basketball. Pull up three, short. Lennox with the hustle, almost had it. Niagara's gonna have the ball and it's gonna cue a quick substitution for Brian Jonker. Foster is gonna check back into the game. Otong checking out. Morrison talking to Steve Wilkie there, trying to get 
a check on the last call and an explanation. Morrison didn't bring it across half court. So it's up on the right wing, tried to slip it to Hutchinson Jr. Strip on the play, he's gonna end up in the hands of Mohawk. You see walking by there, Pakernik, the team's leading scorer in the women's game as they walked away with a victory. Dolmage has it, over to Richards. Richards dribble hand off to Lennox. Lennox behind the back, left hand gets his man up in the air, tried to force it to the corner, ball tipped around, Hutchinson Jr. has it. And Terrence Lennox is gonna foul and it's gonna cue the penalty. So Van Hutchinson Jr. will head to the line for two, the fourth year, 6'5 guard of Nassau Bahamas. One of four players on the Knights roster from the Bahamas, the team's lean scorer. Averaging 23 points per game, shooting 45% from the field, but just 42% from the line. 39.5%, sorry, 39% to be exact. We've got two different stat lines here. We've got two Van Hutchinson Juniors actually listed on the stat sheet, which is a little bit odd to say least. His double isn't out there, but they're playing like it right now, the way he hustles. Rebound by the aforementioned Hutchinson Jr. Football pass outlet and the convert by Bromwell. Lead back up to four. 60-56. Can Mohawk respond? Richards reverse layup off the top and out of bounds. It'll be a substitution. Milos Mladjan's gonna check back in. John Dolman's just gonna check out of the contest. Morrison talking over with Van Hutchinson Jr. right now. DJ over to Hutchinson Jr. Jab with the left foot, he's gonna kick it out. Straight away three basically, got it! Padache again, all the way from Markham. The lead extends to seven. No look pass underneath. Lennox with the finish. Masuka to Lennox. Lajla no inside position on Bromwell on the play. Bromwell uses the space to his advantage. Masuka is gonna get his man to try and draw the charge. Bit of a flop on that one. We get called on the block. Pair of substitutions coming up for the Knights. Jose Ramos gonna check into the game. Alex Elliott's gonna check in, as is number seven, Raheem Barty, the 6'4 forward out St. Catharines, Ontario, in his first year. Foster's guy matched up with Elliott. Dumps it underneath to Masuka. That's to Mladjan. Lennox looks like with the push off, He's gonna get called on the offensive foul. So Terrence Lennox with a couple fouls here in the third quarter. And again, the bonus situation. Those are the ones you can't live with. If you are down seven, those are not the kind of fouls you wanna take. Those in the open court are no-nos and those on the offensive board because you've given them a free possession at this point. And Van Hutchinson Jr. without even having to dribble up the court Gets two shots at the opposite side. Basketball gods may be repaying the favor to Mohawk on that first one. Hudson, Hudson Jr. makes the shot, adjusts his face back, back on, and the lead is eight. Lennox matched up with Hutchinson Jr. Picks up his dribble over to Richards. Richards looking for Foster. Match up with Ramos. Tips off to Lennox. Masuka. Stripped. Elliott's got the ball. Stretch outlet. Hutchinson Jr. on the other end. Up and in. Timeout on the floor. And yes, why not take off that mask? Because right now you are doing a heck of a job, Van Richardson. Van Hutchinson Jr. as the Niagara Knights lead 68 to 58 with the timeout on the floor.
Brian Jonker and his squad looking to respond, trailing by as much as six at some points, having the lead, being tied. They've been up and down. It's been that kind of a game for the Mountaineers. And for the Knights, they come into this game, they have a lead, and they're trying to take one away. Phil Mosley and his crew have been steady throughout. They've held the lead after both quarters, and they continue to hold the lead here at the D-Bar. Their four products of Bahamas really doing a heck of a job against this Mountaineers defense. But as Coach Mo Mosley mentioned at the top before the game, his team runs five to six players deep, and we've seen that throughout this contest. I think almost every single player has seen the court to this point, except for maybe one or two players. So 10 point lead for the Knights. Under a minute and a half left here at the D-Bar. Rival's gonna get called on the push off. Bonus situation as well now for Mohawk. OCAA men's basketball action here live at the D-Bar. The sweet sound of nothing. Terrence Lennox goes to the line to try and make it two in a row, averaging 15 points a game. Too strong on the second one. McDonald with the rebound. They bring it up court. Match up with Foster, hand off to Ramos. Ramos over to Barty. To Lane Elliott, scoop pass into McDonald. Oh, almost got the dunk, got the rebound up. Shot tipped around into the hands of Mohawk. Max Jr. pulling his way against Barty. Drives down the left baseline. Trying to kick it out into the hands of Barty over to Elliott. Elliott looking behind him and Hutchinson, oh! Alley-oop, and through the hoop. Richards gets Ramos in the air, trying to respond to the other end. Partially blocked, they're gonna get a block first. McDonald with the block on the play. A hold to be exact. My goodness, the Knights are flying here in the third quarter. A beautiful alley-oop on the play, set up the entire time. Ben Hutchinson Jr. with the convert. Lead is at nine. Alex Elliott, the 6'1 guard, third year out Wellen, dictating offense. Back to the Ramos. Otong. Match up with McDonald. Little Richards. Foster cutting through the lane. Uses a screen. Bullies his way out to Otong. Otong and Elliott. Ten on the shot clock. Otong stutter step. He's gonna get a reach in on Alex Elliott. Manuel Otong's gonna head to the line for two. And Elliott doesn't like that one. The description is holding his hands. I thought it was a hold, but I guess, yes, that is exactly what he did. If you see the tape, we've got it. Otong's got the first. Manuel Otong single-handedly one of the guys, a key contributor in bringing the team back on the Tuesday night narrow defeat to the fan shot Falcons basically at the buzzer, coming into the game averaging 21 a game. On the other end, Ramos has the ball. Step back jumper over Richards, in and out, rebound, Knights, blocked! One last opportunity, Case pushes it up. Three on two, dump off to Richards, and in! Good finish to the end of the third quarter. Malik Richards off the bounce pass from Aaron Case and the lead is cut to eight. The Niagara Knights lead 72 to 64 after three here at the D-Bar. And look at this beautiful play. You can see Elliott's eyes looking behind him the entire way up and in. Kevin Cooper with the alley-oop. A beautiful play, Alex Elliott's eyes 
lead the defender the entire time. Looks how he sets this up, folks. Looking away last second, right up to Cooper, and a no doubt finish to say the least. The lead only been extended by one extra point through three for Brian Jonker and his squad. They want to avoid two straight home losses. They talk about defending home court in sports all the time. So far, not so good. They're playing behind the eight ball yet again, heading into the fourth quarter. And for the Knights, the trip to Niagara, well, it's been wonderful so far. They've got a seven point lead. They've had eight coming into the third quarter and they're playing as a team and spreading the love and quite frankly, they're really keeping the Mountaineers on their feet this entire game. There's not one single player that has dominated this game. Rather, it's been scored by committee. Leading the team in scoring through three, Livingston Bromwell, 14.6 rebounds for the Knights. Second, Jordan McDonald with 12. Alex Elliott with 11. Ben Hutchinson Jr. filling the stat sheets, 9.7 rebounds, three assists. And teammate Jeff, Jeff Sean Panache with 11 points, including three three-pointers. For Mohawk, league score at this point, Kujo Masuka, 16 points, 10 rebounds. That's a double-double, folks. He'll be heading to Tim's after this contest. Terrence Lennox, 12 points, four rebounds. And Emmanuel Otong, who had a monster performance in the opening game here at the D-Mark, is only four of 14 from the field, including one of eight from the beyond the arc, with 11 points and two assists. Mohawk shooting 39% to begin the fourth quarter, 43% for the visitors. Richardson's got the ball. It's gonna be a shot clock issue once again. So, seems like the start of every quarter starts with the whistle. They're also been told to change the arrow, as you can tell by the signaling from head official Steve Wilkie. So Elliott's gonna hand it off to Richardson on the inbound, back to Elliott. Elliott looking for Hutchinson Jr. Ball ends up in the hands of McDonald, into the post for Cooper, back out. Richardson, deep three, got it! Johnny Richardson making it fall and making it rain here at the D-Bark. The Togs got it. Through the legs, lost the handle, recovers. Richardson brings him out way beyond the three-point arc. The body of man up to Foster. Over to Richards. Richards into the paint against Cooper, a high off glass. Hutchinson Jr. with the face mask on. Playing lights out. Takes the hit off to Elliott. Got Foster on a string there, almost crossed him out. Richardson has it, uses the screen. Elliott, six on the shot clock, underneath the lane, scoots it out, pocket, left corner, three, too strong. McDonald high points, no look pass, back out to Elliott. Woo! I got nothing else to say to that, that's just beautiful ball movement by the Knights. Playing a game of chess, and the Mountaineers are playing a game of checkers at the moment. Foul on the other end, Milos Blajan will go back to the line to try and stop the bleeding for the Mountaineers. Who have extended their lead from a seven point lead heading into the fourth quarter and now doubled up that lead to 14 points. Lajon coming into the contest, averaging 13 points a game, shoots 69% from the free throw line, 50% from the field. Averaging close to 10 rebounds a game, he's got seven to be exact, and almost a steal a game. Elliott gets Foster in the air, kicks it to the corner, McDonald, pocket left side, shot missed. The tog high point again. Looked up court, didn't get it. It's gonna find Lajon reverse, oh! Almost blocked on the play by Cooper. Milos Blanchard with the cover. He's got consecutive baskets for the Mountaineers. Richardson gets a tog in the air. He's got it. Smart veteran play, Johnny Richardson. Second year player, but playing like a senior. Right wing, Foster Shore. Hutchinson Jr. with it. Four on three. Handoff, deep three, missed. 
Ball hustling, out of bounds, Richardson almost into the table here. Official Marley Kasemi, Kasemi is saying the ball was already out by the time Richardson tried to dive for him. I'm wondering if our cameraman would have got that collision with the table or not. Probably would have. They do good work here. You're watching OCAA men's basketball action here on your Saturday evening. Greg Campbell bringing you through the play-by-play -play action. Ball's fumbled around on the rebound there. It's gonna end up with Knight's possession. Here we go, Emmanuel Otong trying to cash in and crash in. Van Hutchinson Jr., what can you say about this guy? So much composure, so much poise. He's masking where he's going with the ball, literally and figuratively. And so far, it's all good. The Knights lead by 12, 80 to 67. 2-2-2, two, 2-2-1 two, 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 full court press. So they're gonna call eight seconds on the floor. Miscommunication on the Knights. Brian Jonker going over it right now with Marley Kasemi. And now a bunch of woes from the Phil Mosley and company. The eight second violation call. So confusion over what the possession clock will look like. So because that was eight seconds in the backcourt, What's going to be happening is that does not reset to 24, but rather because it's set up in the offensive side of things, Mountaineers get the ball with 14 on the shot clock. Otong with the fake to Blanchard. Got it! Back to the press. 1-2-2 two, two this time. Elliott, nice LA. Down to McDonald. Fumbled the ball. It's still covered on the other end. That's how you break a full court press, folks. Move the ball. Case has it. High off the lane, Aaron Case making a case for himself. Nice reverse layup with the right hand, he'll head to the line for one. Case alongside Otong looks like that backcourt one-two punch that the Mountaineers need. Looks like he got a little cut here earlier on in the contest, hence the bandage under the left eye. Hutchinson Jr. to Richardson. Gets back to Hutchinson Jr. No look pass to McDonald. McDonald kicks it to Elliott. Elliott fakes it, drives into the lane, high off the right hand and right foot and in. 10 point lead, 640 left here in the fourth quarter at the D bar. Can the Mountaineers come back on consecutive nights? Rajon misses a shot, rebound. Up and in, Masuka. And a technical on the floor. Brian Jogger is gonna be assessed one. And you can see he's still heated about it. Talking over with Marley Kasemi right now about that call there. Not a fan of it to say the least. Richardson will head to the line for a freebie. And he can't cash in. So Mountaineers will still retain possession. I'll be, though it's by the end line. Sorry, Niagara is gonna retain possession. So full court man-to-man -man pressure. Case right up in the face of Richardson. Nice little push off by Richardson. Ball to the hands of Elliott. Back to Richardson. Richardson. Beats Foster. Foster's gonna get called for the block on the side. A little more physical here in this fourth quarter. You can see Case jawing a bit right now with Johnny Richardson. Get a close up of those two, a little bumping going on between the two sides. So double technicals on the play. 
Ball's gonna still end up in Knight's possession. Offsetting fouls means it's gonna be retained possession, whoever had it last. Richardson's gonna come off to cool down. Phil Mosley sitting down his second year guard out of Niagara Falls. So both fouls count as a team foul. Mix up on the scoreboard here. 6.25 left in the fourth quarter. Mohawk trails by eight, 84 to 76. Case has it. Skips it across. Masuka, matchup with Elliott. Over to Foster, left wing three. Got it! Hutchinson Jr. now has got the ball. 2-2-1. Two, two, Almost tipping it and stealing it was Foster after the steal. Knights still have the ball. Two seconds to get it over half court. Elliott's going to split the double team. No, he doesn't. It's going to be on the floor. What's the call? This is going to be out of bounds on the play. Foster stepped out of bounds while he was on the ground sliding for the ball. Hutchinson, Hutchinson Jr. and company trying to put this game away. Elliott has it off the inbounds. Uses a screen from Cooper. To the post. Turnover, Masuka off a couple of people's feet, ends up in the hands of Pandache. It's gonna be up and in. Game blocked on the play was myself by a couple of Knights Hutchinson Jr. with the convert. Turnover, needless one by Otong. Elliott the other way. Alex, Alex Elliott, dump underneath, convert by Bromwell, and the lead is starting to grow. The bleeding getting stronger and stronger. Nine point lead, do the Knights have? Foster gonna try and respond. Rebound, Masuka, miss. Otong, miss into the hands of Padache. Hutchinson Jr. to Cooper, around to Padache, to Alia, checks his feet, checks the spot. Front rim. <laughs> Phil Mosley calling for a timeout on the next available opportunity. Fade away off the one foot up and in. That will signal a timeout on the floor and they don't get it. They do. So off the one right foot, a shot made on the play by Kujo Masuka, the one bright spot right now for the Mountaineers who trail by seven with 4.39 left in the contest. The Knights, after leading by as much as 14 at one point in this game, I've seen their lead shrink again back in half to seven, the same they started out with. And looking at the pocket left three by Matt Foster, trying to do something to get his team back in this game. You're looking at the bench right now, inside look for both teams. Brian Jonker imploring his team, gotta get their hands up, they gotta be way more active on the boards at this point. And you gotta look at the body language right now as well. It's gotta be, you know, you're only down seven. The body language surrounding Brian Jonker right now is perplexed, confused, a little, let's use the term salty, but they're still in this game. They're still in this game. Aaron Case is gonna try to be the level-headed one for the Mountaineers. The Knights on the other side have been composed, as you can see throughout this contest. Very composed, to say the least. Padache is going to inbound. Find Bromwell back to Padache. Padache looked up court, is going to split the double. It's going to be reach in on the play. Who do they get it on? It's going to be Terrence Lennox. We're getting close to the bonus situation as well. Yeah. 
Padishay's got it. Uses the screen from Cooper. Kicks it, kicks it out, Hutchinson Jr. to Ramos. Back to Hutchinson Jr. Looking for the double here. Picks up his dribble. Over to Padache. Three on the shot clock. Padache matched up. He's going to get tipped out of bounds into the hands of Mohawk. Nice pass underneath the case, who lost the ball halfway through the process. Marley Kasemi saying it was off case last. Blumwell blowing by, had a step on Lajon on the play, who does the smart thing with the side hug there. No harm, no foul. Ball will be inbounded right near the scorer's table. Marley Kasemi looking over at the scores table, reminding them of the shot clock. Bromwell has it, picks up his dribble. Over to Hutchinson Jr., high off that left foot, way too strong. Bromwell cleans it up. He's gonna earn a trip to the line. Foul called on the play on Mlaj on the 6'9 center out of Glendale. A couple times now we've seen this evening Milos Mlajon has simply been boxed out and bodied around by this veteran Knights squad. Johnny Richardson is by the table as is Alex Elliott. Bromwell is going to extend the lead up to eight. 3.53 left here in the fourth quarter. The Knights hanging on, 89-81. This is about the time where the Mohawk College Mountaineers made their run back on Tuesday. Can they climb the mountain once again? Can they get elevated? Going to be a turnover pass intended for Masuka. Bromwell has it over to Richardson. Richardson. Has a tongue on a string to Elliott. Elliott to Richardson. Over to Hutchinson Jr. Matched up with Lennox. Blows by him. Adjust midair. Reverse miss. Clean up on the play. Cooper. Masuka straightaway three. Too strong. Cooper with the strong rebound into the hands of Elliott. Elliott dictating traffic. They take a screen from Cooper. Kicks it to Richardson. Match up with Lennox. Hutchinson Jr. Cross pawn. Elliott gets man in the air. Kicks it out. Richardson checks his feet. Gets Otong moving. Jumper off the front side. Masuka has the ball. Kujo Masuka trying to get something going. Almost gets stripped on the play. Lazy hustle. Richardson almost gets it. Blanchon has it. Tries to find Otong underneath. He does eventually. Otong up and oh! Meeting him at the rim is Hutchinson Jr. He's going to get a foul and a technical on the play. I'm not sure if he realizes that yet. Van Hutchinson Jr. thought he went up two hands straight on the play as a clean foul. It's going to be, as I said, a foul and a technical on the play. Aaron Case explaining it to Knights head coach Phil Mosley. <laughs> Emmanuel Otong, who coming into the contest was the player of the game for the Mountaineers to watch. As we look at the sideline, Mosley talking it over right now with Hutchinson Jr. He's gonna check out of the contest. So I think too strong a walk away to say the least for Van Hutchinson Jr. at the end of that block. He looked pretty vertical, maybe the follow through on the wrist. So the technical free throw is good and now Emmanuel Otong will head to the, stay at the line for two.
Otong makes two in a row. Coming into the contest, the team's lean score, averaging 21 a game, shooting 39% from the field and 78% from the free throw line. Trifecta by Emmanuel Otong. The lead is cut back down to seven. Noise picking up a bit here in the D-bar. 2.40 left to go in the contest. Open house weekend here at Mohawk College. Richardson bounce, bounce pass was intended. Ends up in the hands of McDonald. Cleaning up on the rebound, Cooper. Cooper scooping and converting. Otong trying to get it going on the other end. Match up with Bromwell. Bromwell well all over him. Noise from the Knights bench and an offensive foul. And the Knights playing chess all evening, starting to move towards checkmate. Offensive foul on the Mountaineers on that play. We've lost their composure here in the fourth quarter. They've been hanging around for the most part, the lead stretching anywhere between four and 14 for the Knights. But again, they're two steps ahead, playing chess versus checkers at this point. Richardson's gonna take the screen. A little body on Otong going on. Be a push off from Case on Richardson. It should be close to the bonus situation. And I am correct, they will be heading to the line for two. So Milos, so Foster and Case talking on the sideline right now. Looks like it's gonna be the fifth foul of the game and that will end the contest. It should be unless there's a timeout on the floor. We haven't had clarification. Players are still on the court technically right now. So it looks like that'll be the fifth foul, the final play for Aaron Case, the six foot guard playing out St. Michael's in Brampton in his second year of eligibility. So he's gonna be checked out of the game, Lennox back in. Johnny Richardson making a fall here at the D-Bar this evening. Outside the technical has been steady as they come. Nine point lead, 156 left in the contest. With that 10. Richardson coming in averaging an even 10 points a game, shooting 67% from the line and 38% from the field. That one's good. 11 point lead, 155. Time is now. Mio Tong tries to find Milos Maja underneath. Met! Masuka has it. Trying to go behind the back. No look. Richardson the other way. Puts the finishing touches on. And that should seal the deal. The Niagara Knights putting the finishing touches here on a Saturday evening to the Mohawk Mountaineers. Leadership, veteran savviness coming through once again for a veteran squad about an hour from here. Lax is gonna force it up between two guys, secures his own rebound. Ball is gonna be stripped on the floor. Look at that hustle from both sides still in this moment. A foul on the play, ooh. Ooh, that's a, even I gotta say folks, that's a soft call I would argue. Marley Kasemi on the call there. Richardson Jr. trying to fight for the ball with Lennox while there was no possession by either side. Somehow though, the Knights are gonna get called for the foul. Richardson, unlike the last foul he got called for, is gonna keep his mouth sealed. So they're actually gonna call it on Kevin Cooper after conferring with the scorer's table. Lags, the team's second leading scorer, not 
doing much tonight. Elliott breaks the press beautifully. To bounce pass, and Cooper with the finish. Well, Tong's got it. Next up, they'll push it, shoving a little foul. Just shoving Richardson going at it right now with Lennox. Bad blood brewing here. Officials conferring. Johnny Richardson already with one technical in the contest. I wouldn't be surprised if Coach Phil Mosley subs him out of the head to let cooler heads prevail. So they're gonna call a hold. They call, they call a hold on the play. So Cooper is gonna get called on the foul. Get a close up over here. Mosley talking with head official Steve Wilkie. Jonker trying to still coach his team through the moment at least. Bill Mosley is trying to get some sort of explanation from Steve Wilkie in this situation. So the correction is, is going to be on Johnny Richardson. Two shots. You can hear the echoes of soft calls around the Knights bench to say the least. I won't say what else they're saying over there. Not appropriate for the air. Kevshawn is going to check in. Johnny Richardson is out, and Johnny be good, and Johnny has had a good night, to say the least. Masuka, the lone bright spot, I would say, in this contest, coming in, averaging 12.3 points a game in three contests, shooting 50% from the field. Coley was trying to get across half court. His pass for McDonald. McDonald gets reached on the play. Foster with the reach. So this basket means the Knights convert on one of these hit the century mark in this contest. Announcers jinx. Not intended, but it happened. So the Knights crack 100 here at the Deep Park on your Saturday evening. Lennox is going to pull his way. Met and blocked. And Cooper says, recoup yourselves. Head to the locker room because we're going to walk out here with a victory. Tong's got it. To the corner. Shot missed. Elliott's got it. Matched up with Lennox. Nice little bounce pass. Ball's moved around beautifully by the Knights. A push by Milos Blajon. That's going to be close to his fifth, I think, in this situation. It's going to be the penalty. So two more shots coming the way for the Knights. Phil Mosley and his squad are going to walk out with the victory here on a Saturday night. Putting the finishing touches on this contest. Leading by seven, heading into the fourth quarter, and the fourth quarter was theirs. Never let the Mountaineers come too close after the second quarter. Foster with the push. Jonker calling for fouls. Interesting move right now by Brian Jonker to continue to call for fouls from his team despite being down 13 points at this point. You wonder where the breaking point is for a coach. Livingston Bromwell patting the sat line right now.
Cleaning up the rebound, up and in. Jordan McDonald, it's been there all night and they've done it again. Vertonghen's gonna go in, he's gonna kick it out. Lajon, left side three, got it. Elliott, it's gonna get fouled on the play. So a little gamesmanship going on right now. Kujo Masuka with the foul. Alex Elliott will head to line for two. Elliott, averaging nine points a game, shooting 42% from the field and 60% from the free throw line. Averaging 2.3 assists per game as well. Makes the first. So it looks like there might be a technical on the floor. Brian Jonker talking right now with Safe Raymond. Milos Mlajan might get a technical on the situation. Jonker saying, don't say something you haven't seen. Veteran Steve Wilkie is going to come in to try and calm down the situation. A common practice from the referees in terms of the situation if one referee is being berated by a coach. So I don't think anything is going to come out of that in the end. It is the technical, so there was a technical on the play. So if that stands, if that is against Milos Mlajan and receiving that, then he will sit out the next contest. So Alex Elliott is gonna dribble this one out here at the D-Bar. The Niagara Knights come in on your Saturday evening. Is he gonna go for the layup? He's gonna fake the shot, ooh. He had to do that because of the shot clock situation. I thought that was kind of ballsy there for a second, but smart play on his point to avoid the shot clock violation. The Niagara Knights come in on your Saturday evening at the d -Bark. They dispose of the Mohawk Mountaineers 105 to 90, your final. Brian Dronker and his team drop both games here at the d -Bark this weekend. Will the Knights walk away with a comfortable victory? Never in doubt, they had the lead as high as the finishing score here, and as low as a tied game at certain points, but never let them within more than four points through those third and fourth quarters. They had a response every single time. And the four boys from the Bahamas and the veteran leadership of this night squad comes through. For Brian Jonkiner's squad, they're gonna have to respond next week. pocket three by Foster a couple of bright spots for the Mountaineers to say the least good follow through on that shot but it was all for not as Van Hutchinson Jr. and company you see that beautiful reverse layup foul on the floor didn't get called Cooper with the cleanup the playmaking ability and that pretty much sums it up right now the hustle and grit of the Niagara Knights came through defensively and they walked away with this contest. The final score here at the D-Bark, the Mohawk Mountaineers 90, the Niagara Knights 105. That brings the end to open house here at Mohawk College for your Saturday. If you're tuning into the volleyball or the basketball, we thank you for listening and watching wherever you may be. Have yourselves a good night.